so good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, whenever you listen to this. This is Matt Chibili alongside my critique and partner in crime, Raquel Medina. Hello, hello, hello. And this is yet another episode of BS Beats and Bailey. So, well, with today's episode, we don't really have much to talk about, unfortunately. I mean, last week, at least, yes, because on, of the, on, my, on my side, it was, it was really hectic, really busy. Yeah, um, because, you know, because of the artificial scarcity implied by local film um, cinema. Yes, creators, guys. Cinema believe owners, it or not, you know, we we have to wait until Ash, yeah, we have to wait until Ash Wednesday to experience the awesomeness March that was... is the Lego Batman movie. Why, why yeah, do I have to wait else. till then? And and they also gonna show it with with what um, uh, I believe is Silence. Yes, Silence is also coming out on Ash Wednesday. Right, but why well, do I have saw to already. Wait? Yeah, and we loved it. But why do I have to wait till the, you know till next month to see this movie? I don't know. Yeah, so because yeah. of that, uh, I wouldn't say there's like a dry spell in, in our theaters down here, but um, in my case, I managed to take in two movies, well, Rica- well, one of which um, you saw as well too, um, that would be the sequel yeah. to my personal favorite Guilty Pleasure movie of 2014, I'm talking about John Wick. So yeah, John Wick Chapter 2 yeah. finally came out, we both saw it, so we'll share our thoughts about that. Um, also, yeah. before we get to the, t- the other theatrical release... Um, still keeping within the whole Oscar season because yes we are in Oscar season I know it doesn't really feel like it but I know probably next week or week afterwards that's when you know the hype could start to, um, it really start to begin and then you know it's all about who's going to win this and who's going to win that and yada 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 so the movie I'm going to tackle is the a strong contender actually well actually one of the nominees for um, best foreign language film it's uh, a German Austrian comedy drama by the name of Tony Erdmann and okay also, the show that, um, well, fortunately for you, Ricardo, you did not see, but I had the misfortune of experiencing it. I will explain why soon enough. Yeah, the sequel that everyone's been waiting on, man. Fifty Shades Darker. Yes, yeah. folks. I sat through it. I suffered through it. And I will share my thoughts on that soon enough. But before we get into all that, we have to talk about the you know the Super Bowl tra- um, teaser trailers and stuff. I know we called out some names, some some um, some titles that unfortunately we didn't get to see anything. So we didn't see any Wonder Woman, we didn't see any Justice League, anything. Um, but the ones that we did see, we we saw a really great one for John Wick Chapter Two, which really <laughs> made fun of uh, Fifty Shades Darker. That was nice. Uh, we also saw Logan. Um, what else do we see? We saw an excellent right. one for, for Guardians of the Galaxy. I love that. That line, because we are the freaking Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. I love that. Um, what others did we see? Uh, the big pull point was um, Fleetwood Mac. The great Fleetwood Mac track, um, The Chain. If you're familiar with that song, it's a badass song. And that's the song um, it was going to use for the trailer for Guardians of the Galaxy. Right. Too. So that, was just, that, that's, that trailer was the high. For me, it was pretty damn funny. Um, you get to see what happened to uh all of the characters as, as usual um drax is the best character for me <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. everybody loves drax um yeah. but but from yeah. what from what i've been seeing so far um i think i had a couple of test screenings before and it got like a like a high percentage like a hundred percent actually from from people who went into beauty film. right yeah i heard that i heard yeah. that interest in, um that interesting rumor is the high one of the highest ratings in 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 early screenings or I forget how it's called it for your your test audiences yeah but test screenings that's what they call it, yeah right yeah for your test so, audiences yeah so yeah that could be that that's actually a great sign so I think that you know you right. know Marvel has done it again oh and speaking of Marvel done it again we also got to see um you know some video from the first day of production for um the Avengers Infinity War and for what we've seen here right. Um, and we also Spider-Man, got um, yeah, Spider Man's gonna we be. We also got it. some. Continue. Right. We also got no. We also got just some new. Well, also just sticking on Guardians of the Galaxy for two seconds. Um, mm-hmm. just the have like a thirty second run for Volume Two, so you can find out on Twitter. There's about a thirty second clip you could find. Um, pretty damn clever. There's extra lots of stuff now. Right, right, right. Slightly new footage. Yeah, I think that baby group gonna sell real toys. So. Of course, yeah, yeah, most definitely, most definitely. Um, but yeah, but getting back to the Infinity War thing, um, yeah, so Spider Man's gonna be in it, and surprise, surprise, the Guardians of the Galaxy are also gonna be in it too. So I, I'm really yeah, curious mm-hmm. to see how they're gonna tie in both of those, um, those I don't want to say franchises, but those 
groups together you know the avengers and guardians of the galaxy is going to be really great so i'm hoping that with um with volume two of guardians of the galaxy we do see like a really nice setup for you know infinity war you know um yeah. what else yeah i'd like to see no i'll say i was just saying i really like to see how they do the you know, squaring all these stones together because I don't think they had, like one stone left missing in the storyline. I think that's the Soul Stone. Uh, yeah. Pretty much everything has been accounted for. So I want to see what they're gonna do. Which movie gonna be in? Like, I doubt they'll put it in Black Panther, but they might. Uh, I was expecting to see it in Guardians too, but eh, probably not. You don't know. Um, uh, what about Thor Ragnarok? I don't know. You might see it there. Who knows? Not sure. I, I still don't think it have any, but it might have evidence of that. But Thor Ragnarok have enough mythical crap in it. But whatever, we'll see. Yeah. All right. Um. Okay. So we're moving from from Marvel, and we're just gonna touch briefly on the Academy Awards here. So um, I'm gonna talk briefly about Tony Erdman, which is on which pretty much a lot of people are hoping are gonna win the best foreign language film um, right. Academy Award. I heard about this, but I don't really get a chance to see it. Yeah. Right, so Tony Erdman is a comedy drama. It's um, written, produced, sorry, written, co-produced, and directed by female director Marin Aid. Um, and, like, I'm looking at the Wikipedia page right now. It was actually named the best film in 2016 by Sight & Sound, which is this um, online publication. And, you know, when these guys come and say, yeah, this is the best movie of 2016, this is pretty much a big deal. Um, it got a lot of praise. Um, it showed up on a lot of people's um, best of the year list and stuff. And I've been hearing right. about this show for like the past couple of months. So, you know, finally I took the chance to check it out. Now, the story in a nutshell, it's centered on this um, this guy, this old man by the name of Winfried Conradi. He's a divorced music teacher. He um, pretty much kind of lives by himself. So every once in a while, he would go and check his friends out and stuff. And he has this kind of, you know, this penchant for like these kind of weird, bizarre jokes. So like in the opening scene, for example, he puts on this kind of white face paint and um, he has like, he has four seat basically. So like he takes out the, the lower half and he keeps the upper half up, but he has it kind of extended downward. So, you know, when he's like, right. You know when he has his mouth closed, you know the teeth still showing and stuff like that. And he's the type of person like a, right, a, you right. know, he's the type of person that will just show up in a in a person's house and just kind of freak them out. And they're like he just waltz in with his face paint on, for example, and people just kind of jump her, you know. But they know who he is and they respect right. him and they know that he's 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 basically like a what's he what they're looking for? He's just a guy who likes to play jokes, but it's just like these really kind of dumb, silly kind of you know juvenile jokes. So like I said before, with the face paint and all that stuff. Um, he also has this this um he also you know likes to he also has this tendency to give out like you know fake personas so yes the the um the character tony erdman is actually one of his fake personas that's not actually his real name but that's a name right. that he gives later on in the film and the movie pretty much is about the relationship he has with um with uh, his daughter who i believe is like probably late 20s early 30s and she is like pursuing a career in business cult, um, consulting so she just barely has time yeah. for him and you know she just wants to you know live her own life and be independent and be free she doesn't want to be babysitting you know a father no. but the father of course is you know lonely and miserable at times so you know the, the movie pretty much is you know just him following her on this business trip in um in Budapest actually and we kind of just see you know day to day how they interact with each other so at times she would go to a meeting or she would go to some um to like a dinner with friends or you know colleagues and he would just show up out of the blue or in one scene he would just be sitting like by the opposite end of the room on you know by a table with the same uh four seats sticking out and all kind of stuff there and eventually of course you know yeah. just him being all over the place you know starts, starts starts to weigh her down you know gets on her nerves and then of course they kind of bicker and stuff you know why are you in my way and all that kind of stuff and you know it's just really about their relationship and how they kind of deal with one another it's you know it's like they, they had this rocky relationship but you know eventually they kind of learn to appreciate one another because you know it's, it's family at the end of the day and uh, well one thing that i really liked about the film is that it kind of showed just how awkward people are and how they perceive themselves to be awkward so um like with the with the daughter for example there are lots of moments where 
she kind of questions herself she doubts herself she wonders if people take her seriously if what she's doing here is the writing and stuff and how people look at her now on the other hand with um with her father he just doesn't seem to care you know he just does what he wants to do but at the same time you could tell that you know because he's not getting any younger he has to kind of sit back and really ask himself you know why is he doing all this why is he acting like this idiot for is it just to to get laughs from people or is it just to to gain some kind of you know just to, to get some kind of admiration or just to make his daughter smile you know if i could be rather simplistic you know it's, it's just those little you know things about it that really resonate in the show um but the thing is with this movie though like going in i had no clue what to expect with it um i just knew it was about this old guy and i assumed that his name was um was tony erdman and um like i was just watching this thing but first off before before i even click play right the movie clocks in at two hours and 42 minutes okay well. and for the first hour of this show i honestly was asking myself why is this movie so long it okay now you know with with especially with european films like elf example you always have this style this sort of naturalistic style of acting so you know conversation scenes you know play out like how you know like how real people i, I assume would talk up there you know, you know what i mean it's not heavy on emotion it's just you know people talking back and forth and like that but you know there's stuff going on so it's not like you're bored or you know you're, you're, you're checking your clock or whatever like that right but you know it's a lot of these scenes that show up in the show there's a lot of conversation scenes i mean things do happen but they don't happen as quick as you would expect it is it, the movie just takes its time and moves slowly and it's really just about showing characters and just how they interact with each other and stuff and that's fine but me personally, I felt that the 2 hour and 42 minute time really took me out of it. Like there were moments where I really did feel bored. There were moments where I really was asking myself, all right, where's this story going? I'm not sure, you know. Um, and I, I mean, I guess it's intentional from the director to make it feel like this some sort of, you know, everyday thing, you know. Think like, say, Richard um, Link, um, Linklater with, um, you know, Boyhood. Look at how long that movie was. Right. I believe it was roughly around that time. But look at like how the scenes, you know, played out with how the characters interacted and stuff. You know, it's really like the viewer looking at real characters in real life doing real things. And I get that that what it was going for with this movie here, but I felt personally that, you know, if they, if there was you know, I mean like if there's a story, right? But I shouldn't have to like wait an hour or hour and a half in for me to just pick up and be like, Oh, that's what these stories are about. You know, it really takes a long yeah. time to build up and really get moving, you know. Um, but imagine that the non-Hollywood fans out there, yes, there are people like that out there, will look at this thing and be in awe of, you know, every minute that goes by in this show and be like, yes, this is so amazing. This is what Hollywood should be doing and all that kind of stuff. But for me, I just like, yeah, you could have just easily t- cut out like 12 minutes of it. Even like a two and a half hours or something like that, you know, it didn't need to to be as long as all that, and it does feel long, you know. Um, and you know, like great movies that tend to run for a long period of time, if they have a well told story and really intriguing characters, you know, depending on, on your taste, of course, you wouldn't even care about the length of time. But in this case, it was just like, yeah, I understand the characters, I see how they act and how they talk and thing. But geez, this movie is really long, Dred. Come on, pick up the pace, get to the point. Right. So, I, in good conscience, can you know give this movie a lot of praise because, like I said, the 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 time really bogged it down, and then of course, like I said, the sort of slow pace and just these conversation scenes are going back and forth and stuff. So I imagine like the average movie going watching this thing and just being bored out of their mind, unless they really come in knowing what to expect, and I guess they could appreciate it, but really that length of the film is just a detriment to me and and you know uh, unfortunately i came out of it not really like any film as much as i wanted to do because of that length but you know i really i really have a feeling that it will win regardless because of all the praise heaped up on it i mean it's well shot it's well edited um you know the acting is strong especially from you know the lead character um I mean, it's and there are some 
moments of like dark humor some dark awkward kind of humor and stuff and it works in relation with the two characters but still like i say it's just how you know just the pacing of it and also too because it doesn't really follow this really strict narrative it's really loose so it's it really does feel like let's just say like a week in the life or two weeks in the life of these two characters this um this father and daughter and it does feel like that until yeah. like the very end which kind of just ends you know it just kind of stops you know what i mean just like just like boyhood for example it's going 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 and then you think it's gonna just end here no it just goes on and then goes on, and then suddenly oh wait time's up okay let's go roll credits you know and that's how i felt you know while watching this film I, I felt that you know it was just all these scenes just put together but it wasn't really like a, a real story or like a real conflict or a climax or a resolution it just kind of ends just like that but you know maybe if i look at it again sometime maybe with you know less tired because honestly when i watched it i was pretty tired <laughs> like i say it was just a, a a rough week so you know going into this thing i did not expect the movie to be this long and even if it was long i didn't think that it would have been so slow and dull at times but still for what it's worth it's still worth checking out i like i say in good conscience can't praise this movie i can't give this a five out of five and you know jump on this bandwagon and say yes this movie must win best foreign language film because everybody loves it i can't see that but you know if right. you have seen it and you love it great if you understand the subtext in it great i was struggling to you know to kind of figure out what was really going on underneath the awkwardness and stuff of you know between the characters and the situations but still like I say, it's it's still a well made movie, uh, well directed, well acted and stuff, but just the pacing and just the runtime was just too much for me, honestly. So, um, rating wise, I would give this a strong three out of five. It was it was cool. okay. It was I. It was I. I can't give this a five or four and a half or whatever. But I guess maybe in the next few years when I. <laughs> <laughs> maybe if I watch it early in the day or something so instead of like you know when I come home from work or something like that maybe when I when my mind is ready to really soak in you know everything that's going on maybe I might love it a lot more but for now yeah. 3 out of 5 but don't think that because I give it a 3 don't, don't think that it's a terrible movie if you're really curious to see what it's about and you know I, 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 I can't really say right now if it wins but if it does and you're curious to see you know what the big deal is then by all means give it a watch you might you might like it you might understand it a lot more you might relate it more especially with the whole father daughter dynamic thing but for now three out of five for me so that's all i have to say on to tony right. sorry Erdman. so okay. um I, along you from, you, i'll tell yeah. you i'll tell you for, i'll tell you foreign language films i know was land of mine that's the only one i could have hype which is uh, which is one i really do want to see i wanted to see it you know before right. I saw the that recorded, while, but I didn't, unfortunately yeah, yeah, I saw that a, a, a good while back. So yeah. apparently, like I got um, some release in the states, like this year, cause saw it show up on the Rotten right. Tomatoes, um, you know, score basically. Right, right. So now we're gonna talk about um two sequels, two sequels to two big movies, or one of which came out in twenty fifth, one of which sorry came out in twenty fourteen, the other one came out in twenty fifteen. So let's start with the better movie first, John Wick Chapter yeah. Two. Yeah. So yeah, Ricardo, you want to fill us in on John Wick? Uh, what made it so right, awesome so, and stuff? What well, the first movie before we jump um, into the second <laughs> one? Like, what did you think about the first movie and how it stood out? Yeah, to the you first one. The first one was. Uh, yeah, the first one was like a nice surprise. Um, it was a movie that a lot of people didn't. Um, I I was like kind of writing it off at the time. I remember when seeing the trailer, I was like, okay, this looking terrible. Um, Keanu Reeves and you know you can really bounce back at these doing a bunch of movies that kind of sucked, and. Then it started getting buzzed on the festival, festival circuit. So I'm like, all right, cool, the movie good. Then I went to see it and I was like, oh, it was great. Um, the next one to be so good. Yeah. I think what made it sell so well is the the world building. Uh, yes. You know, yes, it was yes. not only you got the sense of a great, like a kind of well thought out comic of this world of assassins, and it have their own money system and their own infrastructure and their own this, that, or the other. And their own rules. Uh, that, that's I'll important. Talk about, I'll rules. talk about that this one. Yeah. Sorry. No, I say the, no, yeah, the, it was, uh, uh, there was something about the rules of it that, that really stood to me. I loved how they set up right, rules yeah. and if you broke rules, you know, consequences, you know, stuff like that. Um, but for me, what yeah. stood out the most for I, me was, well, sorry to cut you there, is um, the, the homages to, you know, different, um, to different films of the past, specifically within that whole revenge genre. So, of course, you have the, the Hitman, you know, um, 
like stuff that you would see like in early John Woo action movies um of course you know martial arts films anime films as well too and yes because Keanu Reeves in it certain references in the Matrix like you know if you blink and you miss it but yeah it, it does owe a lot to you know classic action and crime and neo-noir films of the past and really when you think about it it really does feel like a film that you know like the first movie and the second one here too feels like something that would have come out in like the 70s because uh, for those who don't know the 70s were, were just filled with all these revenge films like you know um like ruling thunder and um thriller a cruel picture and you know movies where, where the main character goes through some kind of terrible ordeal and then they have you know they, they get some gun or whatever and then they go in for revenge oh yes and the first mad max as well too is a perfect example of that and this film just like unabashedly right. just took the best of those moments and just put them together it wasn't like trying to be anything deeper it was just an action film from people who know action films i love action films and appreciate them as actual cinema and not just you know disposable movies and really went out of their way to make this thing work and make it feel different and fresh and new and that's what stood out to me with john wick but you know continue right. yeah yeah so this this um yeah it, it built itself quite well it had a, and then what made it work and well a lot of people if you're if you're familiar with behind the scenes kind of thing is that it was kind of mostly made by, you know, action people. You know, people who you could tell they probably had long careers as grips uh, behind the scenes. So it's stuntmen in mostly most yeah, cases. Yeah, yeah. Well, the so that's why actually all the was stuntmen. Yeah. So they know their way around right. action and sequences. Yeah. And then you have Keanu Reeves, of course. Exactly. So know his way too, of course, with the Matrix trilogy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Keanu Reeves. Yeah. Keanu Reeves is an excellent action action actor. Yes, um, in yes, my yes, opinion, yes, yes, he knows yes. how to make action work. You really see that shine in this one. Yes. Um, in, in the sequel in particular, and yeah, it was just a nice surprise. And the movie kind of remind me off the top of my head. It kind of remind me of like Kung Fu Panda in the sense of <laughs> I went in with the low expectations, just like all right, this and then it just ended up kind of really impressive. Man, that's quite part of the charm as well. Okay, um, and I, I'll talk I about. You, I thought you were going to say about the references to to old school movies, no? Kung Fu. Um, well, yeah, Kung Fu Panda did that too. You know, with martial arts films, really. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But it, is this just just it being generally way better than expected because with Kung Fu Panda it had three things kind of going against it. Jack Black, yes, the name, and it being a DreamWorks product. And I was like, all right, they're just kind of pretty hit on this. So I didn't expect anything out of it. And I thought this would have been one of the worst ones. And that ended up, you know, that franchise ended up being one of the best of the DreamWorks franchise. Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah, and they just made it work. Um, and the first John Wick was just such a nice little entertaining film. It, you know, nice world building, really fun, actually generally, genuinely funny. Yeah, and yeah, really yes, dark, overall. dark humor in this. Though. Really dry. Yeah, a lot of great humor. dark humor. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it's some good, good. Um, I think it is Nick Kroll. Is he is he cop? Wasn't this? Uh, I think no. there's a scene in Nick Kroll. No, Nick, no uh, who who played Jimmy? Oh. Uh, no, that wasn't Nick Kroll. It was somebody else. I forgot the guy's name. But just those moments, like those dialogues, okay. like, "Hey, Jimmy, sub John, everything good." Yeah, right. you're working. <laughs> it's it's. Well, I didn't I, ask one, working one, again. Yeah, this one thing that I love about the show is the subtext behind it. So yes, those dry lines of dialogue is all about kind of like they both aware that something like somebody got killed, for example. So you're talking kind of way like, yeah, we, I know, I know somebody's dead. Yeah, you know, we just right. talking some yeah, you know, basic right. dialogue, but they Everything know what's going it. on. You're right. Yeah, and right. they make it funny and make it dry as well. So <laughs> yeah, um, delivery is good. Uh, yeah, and uh, you know that first film was just such an entertaining romp, um, and uh, you know so with the second film, it suffered from the problem of yeah, so it kind of remind me of the raid, the raid sequel, you know ah, yes, the second yes. raid film, where it was where trying to be too, it's, like it's, have its cake and eat it too basically, right? And it, it did its world building, but it did too much world building. Yeah, yeah I, I understand what you mean. Yeah, it was it was too much. I don't want to say too much exposition, but more like. Yeah, when you're gonna when you're gonna stop showing us no, how the world works the and get to actual no, story. No, here's the problem. It, right, but it, no, here's here's the one one problem I had with the sequel. Right. Um, it. Well, the story is better than the read, so it does the story part better. I'll say that. But the problem is that the world building just came just became a little too over the top, in my opinion. So it's like, right. wait, how much people involved in this? Especially that final sequence that the film oh, is like, yes, yes, yeah, yes, get yes, it. Yes. <laughs> I, I get that, that will, that that will throw a lot of people off believe me yeah yeah but I was like alright this is a little too much though because yeah, well, just a call back to Amash of well, Keanu Reeves one of Keanu Reeves movies is like oh this is this is the Matrix then <laughs> like, clearly the way they set up is that 
he had to deal with everybody on the planet. That, it was a little too much. Like, it didn't, at no point, you couldn't tell the... Like, I couldn't distinct who is the unknowing public and who's part of the, the secret organ orders of whatever. You know? And then you know, even at, if you at, stop at to point. think about it, it's like, um, how is that even possible, though, when you think about it? Right. No, like, did this happen the, to the be first in film, this one spot? <laughs> right. Know? No, but that's, that's right, exactly. So that, that's with the first film. You, you, you got a sense of, right, it's a relatively small collage of people. It's not that much people, but they could be anywhere at any time. That's cool. But with this one, there's a little too many people, I find. Coming on to the end. Yes. But that's just the only thing. This one, anyway, to just run through with this one. The plot of this one now is, every, well, the events of the film goes, it continues almost immediately after the events of the second film. So John Wick now has to get his car back. That was the one thing that went missing that he didn't really address. In the first film, because yeah. the, the villain of the first film stole his car and sold it. I think I can't remember what happened. Anyway, he got it. He got it. He got it found back, and so they had a whole that was a big opening action sequence, which was actually pretty badass. And he now has to just address like a blood a blood oath that somebody holds him up to to solve a problem, mm-hmm. and basically the plot goes from there. And then they just build the world from there. So you get to see well, even people higher than um, Ian McShane's character. In the whole grand scheme of this assassination group and they kind of have this whole illuminati thing and then they have a big kind of plot twist involving a uh, guy and his sister and a seat on a council and a lot of game of thrones style politics yes. and then john wick just kind of want to still still kind of want to get out that's basically it yeah um but then the story goes to a nice little arc at the end anyway yeah i do make sense talk about the plot because it's really razor thin when you think about it yes, but it the is. action that's yes first thing so, yeah we have to talk about the pre- action well, basically, with the first movie, one thing that really stood the most to me was how the action scenes were, were constructed, the way how they were edited, the way how they were choreographed, especially with the fightings. Sorry, with the fight scenes, sorry. Um, and yeah, yeah, once again, with this movie, yeah, this is... A per- I wouldn't want to say the, a perfect example, but folks, this is how you do action scenes. You don't do yeah. shaky cam, like, um, you know, like take, like, you know, taking two and three and stuff like that. You set up your yeah. shots, you show the character, sorry, you show the actor doing a stunt or, you know, doing something physical as well. And you put the, yeah, we you get put to see the them. character yeah. through different ordeals and stuff. So you really do, you know, you're, you're on the edge of your seat. You're hoping that John Wick or, you know, Keanu Reeves doesn't lose his life. But, you know, I could go on and on about that. But yeah, the action scenes are badass, all of them. Whether it's, uh, you know, a fight scene or, you know, a, a, a shootout or whatever, all of them are, uh, are filmed well, set up well, and it's just that intense energy that, you know, we, we got with the first movie. This one pretty much just kind of amps it up by, by two or by three, basically. So, you know, every, nearly every action sequence in this movie just gripped me, got me on edge. Um, one of my favorites in particular was... Um, well, I won't spoil it. That's Silence but of fight. It's one that, that really ref- is a clear, clear homage to Bruce Lee's f- uh, best movie, hands down, Enter the Dragon. So if you know that movie, yeah. you have an idea yes. what we're talking about. No, you're talking about. Yeah, and on the subject of action yeah. scenes, I have to talk about my boy, Common. This guy... Yeah, Common, come okay. through this. Now, what, what made this funny, right? Like, when I saw his face, when I saw him in the trailer for the show, I was like, oh, jeez, well, Common playing assassin again because the last time he played one was in a little known movie called Run All Night which I honestly enjoyed which also starred Liam Neeson and um, well Ed Harris was in it as well too but come and play this like this real cold kind of deadly assassin in it I was so surprised to see that he was going to play another assassin here actually thought it was the same character now gonna get all nerdy now with the hip hop right now, way back in the 90s, well, actually, early 2000, actually, when um, his Like Water for Chocolate came out, there's a song that he had called The Sixth Sense. Um, DJ Premier produced it. It's one of his best, best, best songs ever. So there's a line where he says, I'm like Neo in this hip-hop matrix. So who would think right. that years from now, Common yeah, reference, would be yeah. going Come. up against Neo himself? And I'm just talking about yeah. fighting. I'm talking about like shootouts and stuff. And I thought it was like how it was set up at first, you know, in the story. I thought it was gonna be like this one quick thing, and there's like oh gosh, nah, that's, yeah, it. that's the up. end. But they stretch it. But it's not like to dilute the fight or make it worse. It just gets better and better and better and more intense. So <laughs> it's not like 
it, the fight just extends, you know, it just, the story plays out, but there's these characters, you know, confront each other over and over and over. And those moments where, you know, they are tussling with each other, those moments yep. were excellent. Though. I just love those moments. I'm not going to say it's Common's best rule, but this is probably the most, this is the rule from him that I'll remember. I mean, it's not like, do I expect a lot of dialogue and from him, I... but just the physicality that he right. brought to the table, that was excellent. I love that. So, yo, come on. Yeah. You did you did it where you went up against Neo himself and you prove your word. Right? And well done. And what I like to about it is that they foreshadow. Well, clearly, well, I don't want to say the ending. The ending kind of sequel baited a little bit. Um, but they clearly I foreshadow know, yeah, what yeah. Common will be coming back in as. Um, they were they, they, they captured because they mentioned what if you mentioned what well we had to talk about um Lawrence Fishburne's character. Yes. And his relationship to John Wick. Um, so it, it kinda was the same thing now. Similar yeah. You know, circumstances they kind of end off with. No, so, uh, we'll uh, see uh, what, uh, what they'll do with that third film. Right now, um, the subject of, of Lawrence Fishburne. Now, I wasn't sure whether to really in- think about this reference or really include it. Um, are you familiar with a movie called Ghost Dog with the Samurai? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Nice, basically. Yeah, I was thinking of his character with that. Yeah, one of the best. Yeah. One of my all time favorite movies, actually, Forrest Whitaker. Yes, Jim Jarmusch, I think. Yeah, Jim Jarmusch directed it. And it was basically like this hitman. Yeah. Well, okay getting nerdy again the movie was actually inspired by another film that inspired john wick which is called les samurai it's from french director jean pierre melville yes if you haven't seen it definitely see it as one of the best french movies ever made um and that case it was just like this hitman who was living by the code of the bushido so he does jobs you know like contract hits and stuff but he still follows the rules of you know of being a samurai so his life basically is like a samurai and with um ghost dog for example with that movie um he lived under that same code but at the same time he was he, you know he was to himself and he lived on top of this um this this rooftop on this apartment building in um, boston i believe it was in no it was new jersey sorry and yep. he collected um, pigeons. So, you know, yep. when I saw Lawrence Fishburne basically doing the same kind of, you know, being on top of the building yeah. with the pigeons and stuff, I was thinking, wait, is this a ghost dog reference? Or is it just them just right. trying to do something a little um, different here? But it doesn't matter. But, I, but then, yeah, yeah, right after, what up is right after, he, like, changes clothes into, like, a smoking jacket or something like that. <laughs> something real classy. Yeah, yeah. That was that was funny. That was uh, real funny. It reminded me, and yes, the moments with him and and um and Keanu Reeves. I don't want to say it's directly inspired by the Matrix, but you could you, you can't help but remember the the um the first movie, yeah. you know, where Morpheus met Neo and they were talking with each other. But in this case, it's right. just played for kicks, and you know, it's just Lawrence Fishburne just being so aware that John Wick is being hunted by this person and that person so you just kind of laughing at him yeah. like you know <laughs> you coming that to me for help <laughs> the, the introduction to that whole sequence yeah the introduction to that whole sequence is actually pretty badass because two things you get this amazing um action sequence before it involving a pencil just yes brutal. yes yes Can remember and in the first movie then, the big the big thing because okay well yeah. john wick's character is basically like this this um this big legend among the underworld so he's so He's so dead. He's so deadly. Now. He's so ruthless. And one of the stories that these crime, you know, these criminals tell each other is that, yeah, one day John Wick was in a bar. And he kills three men with a pencil. And he mentioned yeah, it again pencil, in yeah. this movie, but in this one we actually do see this man kill two guys actually with a pencil. And it's awesome. It's very, 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 very awesome. But yeah, continue. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, and it, well, it, that, they, then they introduce the that that's a pretty cool part when they introduce the you know um, uh, right before they introduce Lawrence Fishburne's character, um, that little scene with the guy begging for change, which is pretty awesome. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> well, uh, well, yeah, that that's uh, what you yeah. see. It's a guy begging for change. It comes unexpectedly, but yeah. when you see it plays out, it works excellently. Um, yeah. What else I was gonna say? Um, the we we get introduced to some other characters as well too. We get to see the will. You know the, the wheel building, which was something that I was really hoping to expect to see in this one here. Um, the wheel is really like deeper and darker, 
um, you really do get to see how these assassins work, how they do their jobs, and you know just how easy it is one of them could kind of lose their life, and you know it's all these like power str um power ba power struggles and all these little you know stuff going on, and what I love what what I really love about you know this movie and this 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 franchise so far. Um, and once again, it's just like the Matrix. It's this world that's like concealed, you know. It, it's just concealed from your eyes now. So it's like you're looking at this one spot and you think it all is just normal. But then when you look deeper, it's something else going on. And it's you know, in this case with this movie, if you are not part of that world, you would know what's going on. You have to be a killer. You have to be an assassin to know how this world works. And you know what's going on in this building and who this guy is and all that kind of stuff i love how that plays out um gripes though and these are kind of minor but they kind of took me out of the movie a bit uh yeah. ruby rose who shows up again second time for the year um last time i saw her was right. in the triple x movie like i like i like the idea behind her character so she's basically she she communicates through sign language um right but i felt that which she was is yeah. a very smart mover. Yeah, it was. It was something different. Very smart mover. But I find because personally she's that... a terrible actress in my opinion. Wait, who? No, I say she's a terrible actress in my opinion. So having her not talk is like a really smart idea. That's the problem. That's the issue. It's because that now, Orange and the New Black aside, um, I felt like just like with Triple X, she's not the best actress out there i'm not expecting her to be but and, and i'm not saying that she doesn't try anything like that and she certainly does have presence i mean that face though goddamn but i don't know i just yeah. felt like in this case here with this movie even though she doesn't have to deliver any dialogue and not really embarrass herself or whatever she's not given that much to do really and just really kind of comes off like not more like a throwaway character or anything like that she's just there but she doesn't really do much she, she's given opportunities to do things but she's just there to to do some kind of sign language to people and of course to, to john wick as well but still right if, if you had just taken her out for the movie the movie would not have been affected at all that's really to show how True. minor her character was unfortunately and i wasn't expecting her to be yeah, like this is. real gun toting badass but the way how they set up a character it was like that but then it was just like um i could shoot you or i could just give you these sign language signals or whatever and you know i'll be like be seeing you or whatever like that but you know near the end right. she's given a moment where she has to fight um where she has to fight john wick that was cool and everything like that but just leading up to it she just didn't really have much to do and i felt that and then again with the show just try to establish will so much you could have given her just a little bit more character i guess um the other characters were decent to um yeah franco nero <laughs> last time i saw yeah. him was in um django and chain yes for those who don't know he played the original yeah, that, was, that was actually quite tough. that was that was clever like i i was had to look at him his face goes like oh geez that's actually him you know and it, you know it's a great idea putting him in um you know the the room scene so yes they do go to rome and you know a, a, yeah. a, a, a certain mission takes place i'm not gonna spoil what happens there but yeah i was glad to see him there um he was kind of like what uh this fellow was in the last film who uh winston yeah yeah ian mcshane's character yeah he's there um <laughs> i don't know there's something about this guy and how he plays his character is really cool like he's always aware of the rules and he always tells John Wick you know you have to play by the rules but he doesn't mind kind of letting him off like giving him a little head start or whatever you know because he kind of likes him and respects him that much but he knows that you know if he just drops the ball that's it for him basically so you know those the characters that return are cool um expected to see a little bit more of John Ligazama's character but then again he's just a guy in the chop shop so just yeah. like before you know, he's just there in the chop shop to kind of just give um, John Wick some information, or at least John Wick could talk to him about some situation or whatever. But, you know, he's he's not there in the movie that much, but I kind of expected that. Um, right. I felt that the room mission was leading up someplace, and then it just kind of ends at a certain point, and I was like, well, that was kind of underwhelming, but the consequence of right. that of that mission... And then of, yeah, that was, that uh, when he came off. back to you know to New York, that's when the movie picked back up for me, you know. Um, so right. a little rocky start in terms of setting up the story. 
And oh yes, finally I forgot to mention to the villain, um, Santino. Right. I felt compared yeah. to the last villain, the Russian mafia guy, he was like a bland villain. Jay. Like he had some some decent lines, and you know some like the moments where he was in the uh, museum and he saw like the sculptures of the of of different gods and stuff. I thought that was cool in terms of visually establishing his character. But I felt as a villain, he was just like, eh. you know, he wasn't threatening. He wasn't like deadly like how you know the last guy was in the last movie he was a guy where you know yeah you, you don't want to mess with this guy at all this one here is like well you know what i can't really do this job so um i have john wick under this blood oath so john wick gonna do this job for me i just gonna sit in this right. museum and stay at paintings that's that's a big trick you know right. but yeah but no, i mean he, he, yeah, he's, I don't know. He's, no i like i like what, uh, what i like what they do with it is that well john wick was even though john wick is in the right you know, it's still you know it's a classic case of spirit of the law versus letter of the law. Right. So this guy compl- you know, co- you know, constantly exploiting the letter of the system. Yeah. Say, well, John, we can't kill this person, or you can't kill that person, but I, I could do this nasty behavior. Um, because the the big the big twist was, well, he gonna put a hit out on John Wick because he killed my sister, even though he told John Wick to go kill his sister. And yes, yes. They would believe him because technically part of the council. Uh, I love what they did with that. And yeah. the sad part is that John Wick had, you know. The only way for John Wick to get out is to just, well, actually, well, it dies a big plot, plot thing in the ending, which I was actually surprised by. Um, and then the ending, which was pretty badass. Yes, it was. Um, yes, it was. Um, I, I love I, I, how I, I, the movie kind of sets up the end. It, um, it really works. And I'll get to, you know, how another sequel failed to capitalize on that. It really works as a sequel in terms of set, you know, putting this main character through this big ordeal and at, at the same time really raising the stakes and then ending it off in such a way where you know all bets are off man you know i loved how this movie ended like that um even though some bits yeah. leading up to it were very implausible there are some things in it where you have to suspend your disbelief of course but you know that that's always how it was right. with the first movie but this one just took it a little too far at times but it was just so fun to really watch that you kind of just laugh it off, and yes, you, you will be laughing and cheering throughout the show. But, um, like right. I say, this gripe-wise is just that I felt that the story took a good while to really build up, and then when it did, and I thought it was going to continue on this path, it just kind of stopped and just kind of went back. Like, this did this complete 180, and then suddenly it just got better and better and better, and then, you know, it just ends. But it ended off on a high note, though, and I just yeah. can't wait to see what they do with, um, with, with the third yeah. one. Yeah, so and yeah, little, as I say, well, you mentioned John Leguizamo. Um, Lance Reddick makes a comeback. Yeah, I enjoy yes, his little course, role in the first one. Yeah, Ch- um, he comes Char- back in this um, one. Charon, I love this character. So I was like, are you leaving yeah. soon? So you take care of the dog. Is this everything time. okay? Yeah, and yes, we we do see the the dog yeah. that um, that John Wick took under his care at the very end of yeah. the movie. Check out the, um, yeah. the moment. Well, yeah, <laughs> something about what 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 stood out to me like there's a shot where um where uh John Wick and the dog are walking along this bridge and yeah even though it did not happen in this movie that i'm going to reference here the shot of them walking together the you know him and the dog reminded yeah. me a lot of like mad max 2 the road warrior you know right yeah, yeah just this loner but he has this dog by his side and just the mere fact that he doesn't name the dog spoiler alert <laughs> you know remind me a lot like the road warrior like the dog did not have a name it was dog. That was the name of, of the dog, basically. You know, <laughs> it's yeah. just so much how you know the main character just just in his own world, in his own head, that he doesn't even have time to sit down and name the pet. You know what I mean? So <laughs> that was really yeah. clever. Uh but yeah, yeah but as I say, from, yeah, continue. action, action. Yeah, overall, I want to give him a rating. Yeah, um, yeah, please, please. Overall, yeah, solid sequel. And it didn't have anything that really blew my away. But again, I think it's just because I know. Now I have my, 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 um, my expectations pretty tempered. Unlike the first film where I was like really had a low expectation with it and it didn't surprise me. So yeah. it didn't have anything that blew me away that much. It was still pretty badass except for the pencil stuff. That was awesome. Yeah. And the silencer stuff. That was pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. And, I say, and the ending sequence, which was also awesome. Yeah. Um, still solid arc um, for John Wick. It, it Again, sequel baits a little bit, but you know, still a good, good sequel. I just want to see what, how the trilogy plays itself out. And yeah, I'm going to give this a low IMAX. 
Um, All right, cool. At least it's an IMAX. It's solid business for me. Um, you know, it had a little a set of dry lines from Wick as, as expected, but, you know, it's Keanu Reeves, so whatever. It, it fits the role. Yeah. And, yeah, they just made a lot of smart choices and get around all the little problems with the movie overall. Um, so it's stuff that you didn't really mind, you, you know, they made you they make you not mind it because of how well constructed this was overall. I still enjoyed it. Uh, yeah. Well, for me, I, I thoroughly enjoyed this. This is how you do a sequel. Um, you know, everything that you loved in the first movie, everything that stood out to you, you know, whether it's the dry dialogue to the over-the-top action sequences that, you know, are all always well shot, well edited, and well choreographed are here. Um, yeah. I felt that the story itself was kind of rocky as well. Um, and especially, I mean, it's not like, again, the whole, okay, they killed my dog, so now I have to go against the Russian mafia. You know, it's something totally different here. But like I said, I was really under the impression that it was going in one direction, but it just ended up flipping and going into someplace else. And then I think it's really because of the, the motivation of the character. Like, in the first one, the motivation was pretty clear. You know, you kill his um john wick's dog you know which was the one thing that um reminded him of his of his late wife and he took that away from him for no reason and yeah. now it's like vengeance and that. so you get that right. it's very it's very simple but it's straight and it's to the point but in this one it was just like i'm retired and now i'm out of retirement you know unnecessarily and i do the job right. but you know i kind of went in knowing that somebody was gonna come and stab me back and it did happen, so now I have to fend for myself. And now it seems like everybody, literally everybody, is out gutting, you know, out out for blood. So, you know, so the motivation wasn't really that clear. wasn't wasn't that clear to me. It was more like survival of the fittest, really, or you know, survive or die, that kind of thing. But it still made for a very engaging and very intense sequel. So, um, rated wise, I would give this a decent four to five stars. If you loved the first movie, you will yeah. have a blast with this one. There's no way you could kind of. There's no way you could come out of it and say, "Oh, that was terrible. The first one was way better." Blah blah blah. You have you. You don't go into no. a John Wick movie expecting, you know, Oscar worthiness. You go in expecting action, expecting intriguing characters, intriguing will, and just, you know, just a breath of fresh air in terms of like the action movie genre. You get that. So as a sequel, I think it works, you know, excellently. Not perfect, but it works well enough. And, yo, I just can't wait to see what they do with part three. I actually psyched right now to see what happens with part three. Yeah, so, yeah me too. I, and I really hope, yeah, I really hope, we, you know, in a couple of years, we just get to see the sequel play itself out as soon as yeah. possible. Just, you know, get and, done, yeah, see what and, they do with it. And I'll say this in closing. I'm hoping, just hoping, just hoping that it plays out. It, it, it is a trilogy. Like, for it to be four and right. five we'll and six would just be three. diluted. I, yeah, I yeah, think it would look perfect as just being three movies. So, you know, uh, 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 you know when those three with, movies with, are out on home media, I could just probably watch them out on a Saturday night with friends and just have fun. You know what I mean? Yeah, because with, with, with Taken, they mess up. this Because the second Taken was so, re, so poorly done. I just didn't want to see a part three at all. Yeah, um, there was but no with this, reason yeah, for this a part three. Than the, yeah. Yeah, there was really so, no reason for uh, Patrick. Well, you know, <laughs> thanks for reminding right. me about Taken Tree. But oh gosh. Yeah. And you know, again, a good quick comparison got to it. The one of the things that killed Taken so badly was the editing. Just jeez way, just the production value is so horrible. Dude, it's um, like like why anybody who... it's like twelve shots just to show Liam Neeson jumping over um uh uh, uh a Yeah, fence. That's, I'll not remember. Twelve that's... shots in them. Yeah, some yeah, something like that. You just all this choppy yeah. lazy editing. Like yeah. And, and well, what, and what was, was I think, I think it was his daughter, his yeah, the, the daughter again yeah. get kidnapped or is either him or the or the wife get kidnapped or some kind of thing. It's, it's like a person who too old enough and went through the drama already got kidnapped again. Right. So yeah, that's kind of dumb. had to go and do it again, and yeah, waste of time. Yeah. So glad that he took it franchise is yeah. done. But yes, we have John Wick three right. to look forward to. I hope that they do. If this is the end, I hope it is the end. They do end it off on a high note. And the way how part this one ends is like, oh, jeez, boy. Uh, <laughs> like, I just, like, wondering where they're going to go with this thing. I mean that in a great way, though. Not in a terrible way. But, wow. Just really can't wait to see what they yeah. do next with this. Now, we're going to turn to a show that I don't want to see the third part of. <sighs> so, yes, folks. Well, all right, I have to explain. So, 
I honestly was a bit curious about Fifty Shades Darker. Now, I hated the first movie with a, with a passion. I didn't go to see right. it um, Valentine's Day weekend when it came out. I was... Um, no, sorry. Um, Deadpool didn't come out yet. Deadpool was year afterwards. But anyway. Um, I was curious to see... Honestly, at the, at the time it came out, I was curious to see like the audience. like Who would actually come out to see this thing? Because I was expecting this thing to be like, you know, this real smutty, real, you know, bordering on hardcore porn, that kind of thing. I was expecting that. Right. And then the yeah. reviews came out and a lot of people, you know, gave it bad reviews. I was like, okay, good. I don't need to go silver to see this. Great. And then near the end of the year of um, 2015, a lot of people said right. it was the we- worst movie of the year. And at the time, I said it was Fantastic Four or Fan Four Stick. And then I right. actually watched this movie for myself. I watched the unrated version. I was like, yeah, this right. movie is terrible. It was terrible. Um, <clears throat> so with this one here, I wasn't really excited to see it. But the thing is, I was looking at the title, Fifty Shades Darker. Jay. I was looking at, you know, what the trailer was giving me. And I was telling myself, well, you know what? I haven't read the books and I have no intention to. And this is the second part of this trilogy. So you know how sequels work, right? You know, with, with sequels, for example... Well, yes, like John Wick Chapter 2. Alright, with the first movie, for example, this is a little brief full run. Now, with the first movie in a, in, a, in a trilogy, you establish the world, you establish the characters, the goals, the motivations, all that stuff. And then the second, the, 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 the second film, you expand on this world. You give the, 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 the characters, you put them in more, you know, in more situations, in more peril. And you really explore the themes and the aspects of the first movie that made it so memorable, right? And then the third one, you know, this is where everything just kind of... This is this is the point where everything leads up to and then you just want to see how everything plays out and then it just ends, right? So I figured with this one here, you know, because the first one just failed at establishing anything, I felt with this one here, we would have gotten... A little bit more about the world of Fifty Shades and more particularly the, the relationship between Anastasia Steele, which is so not a porn name, and Christian Grey. Right. Yeah. And unfortunately, but not surprising, we ain't get none of that. But before I rip this yeah. movie to shreds, Ricardo, uh, all right, like I have to take a sip of water for this. So, Ricardo. Share, share your thoughts on, on Fifty Shades. Like, I, I don't know if you ever saw the first movie or if you saw the parody, Fifty Shades of Black, right. which was I, equally terrible. But thoughts on right. I this saw, franchise. Yeah, okay. So I saw the... So I was always familiar, somewhat familiar with the books um, because it was supposed to be a, a fan fiction of Twilight. So it was basically Twilight for adults. Mm-hmm. It is, yeah. It's supposed to be basically a Twilight fan fiction made for adults. And I was kind of familiar <clears throat> with the general narrative of the books. Right. Um... And yeah, it was just this kind of just lazy route. It it was just like a classic case of how to just game the system without with the with the most mediocre product ever. Yeah. Um, and I heard the book pretty bad. Never, I read. I think I read the second book, but I just was like, yeah, this is just not not engaging me at all. It's just a mess. And then the movies came out, and I was like, all right, well, this actually looking well made, it's looking decently shot. You know, when I saw the first trailer. And I watched it. Uh, I watched it about uh, about about a year after you talked about it. Uh, and so I just find the time to watch it. And I was like, "Yeah, this is terrible. Like, wow, why would anybody make this? I don't get what the appeal to this is. It seemed to be making a lot of cash, but I didn't get like who it is are these people who into this? Is it for older women? Is Gano Twilight had that? Eh? Had that? You know, it had it for young teenage girls, and then you have older women. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so it, as a, it's designed for that, maybe, but like I don't get it. But then it's like the same thing with Twilight. It's just it's have a female audience that critics will hate. Um, and sorry to say it, a lot of films kind of a lot of the film industry operates like that. Once something is kind of solely designed for women, it's automatically lambasted on for better or for worse. Right. Um, but in this case, yeah, it's clearly a case of the worst. I have a lot of stuff that I like, um, like the Princess, the, um, the Princess Diaries or something like that. I find the first Princess Diaries quite yeah, actually first quite one good. Was, was great. Um, the second one didn't care for. It. Yeah, or even movies like Titanic. Um, you know, again, a movie that's k- kind of somewhat catered to women, somewhat. Yeah, um, because it was because of the technical aspects and the narrative, and then guys go watch right. it and still enjoy it. It's not a chick flick per se, you know. Right. 
Yeah. Yeah, but movie, yeah, but anyway. But a lot of a lot of critics tend to dress down these movies anyway, regardless of if they're genuinely good or not, and I think kind of unfair. But in this case, yeah, they just went for the bottom of the barrel of whatever female, you know, cinematic audience might be like. And so I didn't again I didn't take the effort to go see this, but I get why it's popular. And again, much I could, I would, one thing I didn't mention with John Wick is that John Wick was basically counter programming to this. Um you know, his Valentine's Day, you design your movie around this guy who kinda loved people even though he's a bit of a sociopath and I don't really understand that. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it is kinda weird. Like the books is just a such a strange phenomenon. And I don't wanna really like get into this because it's like, wait, why are we talking about this exactly? Why are we <laughs> wasting my time on this? Like it, is that kind of passing feel like Twilight? Yeah, Anybody's yeah, talk yeah. about Twilight? You know, anybody's talk about Twilight anymore? You know, they, like the, okay. the Twilight it series just comes... ended and nobody even talks about it. You know right, I mean? nobody give a shit. Yeah. yeah. Where's Teal yeah. a lot there? Like, where is Teal a lot there? Well, yeah, I mean, like last he, week, he killed 25. Where is he? He's easily <laughs> the lowest talent to snow to the bunch because, um, oh, Lord. you know, the other two are not that bad. Um, no, no, no. But, yeah, but he is like horrible. Yeah, terrible, terrible, terrible. Um, anyway. Yeah. All right. So, like I said, with this one here, I, I, was, I was just curious, you know, I was just curious to see how darker this movie would have be, you know, because the title, Fifty Shades Darker, right? The title, right? Yeah. This movie is not dark at all. Like, if you were to compare it to yeah, the first movie, up. it's not dark. It's just the same shit that you got from before. So, let me just run down the story briefly, right? I don't want to waste my time on narrative, right? So, for those who actually suffered through the first movie, uh, you will remember that at the very end, yes, at the very end, like the last five minutes, was when Miss Anastasia Steele, which is soon not a poor name, decided, you know what? I don't like how you spanking me. I don't like this abuse. So, I'm leaving this relationship. And she leaves Christian Grey. So... This movie here starts now, and she kind of moving on with her life, and you know she working in this job and stuff. Um, this um, this independent publishing place in Seattle, and Christian doing heating. So you're giving the impression that you're moving on, now, right? And then yeah, <laughs> if you remember from the first one, there was the the guy who was in the friend zone, uh, Mister Hosey, or as I call him, Noe Hosey. He's the he's the Taylor Lautner in the right. story, so he's the one who trying to get in in Anastasia um, Anastasia's jeans. But it's like no 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 no, we're just friends, <laughs> that kind of thing, right? He has an art gallery, right. right? This is within the first ten minutes, so I can't call this spoilers. So his 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 art selection, his his section, whatever, is just portrait photos of Anastasia. And it's like real right. selfie, not even selfie, but like, you know, pictures that you would take on your phone, you know, like you're hiding your face, you know, you're covering up your, your mouth with, with, with your, with your, with your color, stuff like that. And it's, he just has this up like on these different, you know, canvases and stuff now and selling, you know, with the, with the, with the, with the intention of selling these things, right? So Miss Steele comes in and sees all these paint, um, all these images, and of course she's like, you know, what the fuck? Where you have all this stuff? Where you have all these pictures of me for? It's like, well, you know, you know, he is he just inspired to do this, of course, because you know he still he he, he, he think because you know because she leave um, Christian, he have a chance now. So I guess right. taking pictures of the girl that they try to track and put it up in a museum for the whole you know for people to see is 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 the best method of doing so anyway so surprise surprise christian shows up and say he buying all them pictures you know why because he don't want anybody staring at it that's the reason yeah, whatever right yeah <laughs> and in less than five minutes they start back so they i mean they start back the relationship but in this case here, Anastasia's just like, well, you know what? I don't really like the the, the whole violent aspect, you know. Be, you know, with this whole dominant submissive relationship that we have, you know, I want us to have a real relationship. I want us to tone down on the on the beatings and the, with you know with the leather straps and all that kind of stuff. Tone it down. Now. Let me have a normal relationship. I was like, what? Well, okay. Yeah. So they're actually gonna be a real couple, be interesting characters. Nope. It's the same thing again. She wants sex from him. 
he wants sex from her they do it whenever they want to they go in the bed you're hearing some pop song play switch positions blah de, blah de, yes. blah you've seen it before and they try to bring in a couple of subplots so they try to touch on Christian's past because um, if you remember from the, from the first movie <laughs> so Mr. Man in the first movie was telling Anastasia this while she was sleeping huh? that his mother died when he was age 4 whatever like that she was a, 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 a crack addict and thing. Right. so he telling her this while she's sleeping and she wakes up like after he set, like he just comes over like when she's sleeping tells her that right she she dead asleep right? she knuckle and then she wakes up is like oh i didn't know you were there so he brings up the fact that yeah i yeah. told you this when you were sleeping but like shit she didn't hear right so afterwards he was um taken and he was adopted by um this uh lady um who also was in the first movie um grace who's played by marcia gay okay. who should know better she's a great actress what is she doing in this movie yeah so <laughs> Her friend, um, I, I use that term loosely, Eleanor, um, played by Kim Basinger. Yes, Kim Basinger. Remember her? Right. Yeah. Yeah, I was wondering, like, I heard she was in it and I was like, wait, what? Why is she yeah, in this? No, she was like, never I, particularly I, good actress, Margaret. Even from the first part, I heard she was movie, like, she was really that great, you know? Even from 8 Mile right. playing Eminem's mother, she wasn't really that great and only actress. Talk, no <clears throat> but anyway, so... She actually was um, was Christian's former lover, so she was the one who got Christian into the whole S and M thing, right? So okay. she just so happens to be Christian's business partner. So they kind of make back up years ago. So it's now all business. So it's not like he trying to track her down or whatever like that. But at the same time, she's kind of giving him the eye every once in a while. You know, she kind of you know lusts for him and stuff like that. What you would expect. But anyway, <clears throat> um, and then you have one of Christian's former um, submissives, right? And what happened is that right. um, basically she moved on from the relationship, she got married, but then after her husband died in a car accident, she just started to go crazy and just started to fawn over um, Christian to the point that she stalks him, right? So yes, remember that, that scene from the trailer where, you know, um, Christian and Anastasia She's sleeping? Batman. And she does the Batman thing? Yeah, Batman. Yeah. That's her, right? Yeah. Now, about those two characters, right? About... All right, I, I forgot to mention one last character. So, the, the, the next character we want to bring in now is um, Jack Hyde. Jack Hyde, folks. You see how creative these people are with names? So, <laughs> he's played by Eric Johnson, who I'm not yeah. familiar with his work or whatever. So, he's, he's, um, he's Anastasia's boss, right? And he notices the fact that, you know, yeah, she works hard and she's diligent and she loves what she's doing and stuff. So she wants her to do good. She wants, she, she, he kind of encourages her to work hard and stuff. But as you would expect in a movie like this, he has this secret crush on her. And then when, you know, um, Anastasia and, 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 and Christian make back up, you know, he gets jealous there because, you know, he tried to get moments, you know, by, you know, to have her by himself there, basically. But then Chrissy kind of shows up. There's one scene where, um, where Jack invites Anastasia over for, like, lunch or something like that, right? And she said that she was bringing over her boyfriend her. So, Jack real talking to her and getting close up with her. And then Christian comes and it's like, oh, who is this? Is like, and, you know, um, basically Christian hugs her and, like, I'm her boyfriend. And kind of hugs and pulls her, right. pulls her away now. You know, him once again claiming Anastasia's his now. I'll get to that in a bit. But then, Jared, somewhere later on in the story, just out of the blue, it's like a light bulb just, just cut off. And he just switches literally like to his surname, to like Mr. Hyde. So now he's okay. like obsessive and now he, he wants her for himself and he, he claims he could be a better lover to her than, 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 than Christian could ever be and all these kind of things. Just out of the blue. No build up. No tension. It just happens like click. Just like that. So yeah. So that's what we have with regards to world building, right? We have these three characters. Well, okay. Two from, from Christian's past and one that's involved in Anastasia's presence. Present, sorry. Now here's the thing. Now you're expecting with a movie with the title Darker, right? That yes, you would explore both of their characters now. So let me let me focus on Christian for a bit. 
you have Kim Basinger character and you have the, the stalker character they are in the movie for no more than 10 minutes right? and it's like their scenes are just like spread out throughout the movie so with the stalker for example she just shows up early in the first act she comes through in the second act there's like a little conflict there going on and then her story just ends it's resolved just like that boom it just ends right same thing right. with Anastasia's um, um, her situation with the boss now. there's a conflict and then it just ends and then same thing with Kim Basinger's character there's a conflict and then it ends so there's no real conflict in the big story there's conflicts or semblances of conflicts in the um, in the subplots but when they end they just end you know so they don't add anything to the overall story so what we have right. left here yet again is just this uninteresting couple and you know just them being uninteresting which is the same thing that I hated about the first one the first one okay the, the premise of it was dumb at best right this plain Jane Gill and suddenly this millionaire just just suddenly sweeps her off her off off her feet and you know treats her and you know loves her and you know have sex with her all that kind of stuff but here's the kicker yeah. though he's into bondage he's into SM and stuff so do you stay with him or do you go no she just stays and she has to sign this NDA and you know she's the submissive and he's the dominant and it's all this thing because he loves that kind of stuff now right now I figured with the first one because that whole SM thing is really tap it's still taboo actually I mean it's kind of accepted now especially with you know how sexualized we've become over the you know the past few decades and stuff but there's still people yeah, not, you know, not shock anymore. yeah but you know something like that you want to know how a relationship like that could actually work out now where you love each other you want to have a real relationship but you have this this kind of secret you know dominant dominant thing going on there. and i thought that the first movie would explore that unfortunately no it didn't right this one i thought that it were going to at least try to explore that now and here's the thing right because she broke it off in the first movie right i figured that you know because she accepted the guy back she would at least be in control she would have called the shots for once that she would have said well let's but and she does every once in a while she would say you know what let's not do this or let's go and do this or whatever like that but still it's christian calling all at least most of the shots it's just him seeing like there's this one scene they showed me in the trailer where they at a dinner and just saw it with, like she's saying oh um she she she, she want to go home now she want to you know she want to do the dinner basically and he's like well he can't wait take off your panties Right. just so and what does she do she just does it she doesn't hesitate yeah. what, well she does a little bit of hesitation but she just does it she doesn't complain she doesn't say you know she doesn't throw um, a glass of champagne to the, to the man face she's just like well you know what I'll do it and you know the reason being because she is sexually attracted to the guy okay right but still once again is this woman just being led and controlled by this man and I cannot understand what women see in you know in in a story like this in this franchise dread like yeah yes at this base at, at at this core it's you know all these bedroom fantasies and all these middle-aged women have and stuff you know just it the whole premise is a fantasy this, this you know this this woman who not really get any most out of life and then suddenly this suave handsome rich guy just comes and sweep you off your feet and that's it and yes, you get to learn about yourself and your body and all that kind of stuff. But apart from all that, there's nothing. There's no subtext. There's no. There's nothing provocative about it. It's not like, okay, how does this relationship work? What are the 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 advantages and disadvantages disadvantages of it? Sorry. And like I was, I was like I was telling myself with this one here, I thought we would have get to to really understand more of the relationship now, like with. And oh yes, and one thing with with Christian, he keeps saying that you know he 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 loves her. He really loves her. He wants to do good by her. Okay, no problem. So they have any relationship and stuff, but you would think that at some point in time, you would get to understand why he's so into this whole BDSM stuff. You only get few glimpses of it, and there's this one ridiculous scene where he takes uh, her makeup and like draws this um. Like he draws around like the his torso basically and saying these are my boundaries. So like when she's looking right. at his chest, there's you see like um not cigarette burns but like scars now basically. 
that you want to know where they come from now so you could put two and two together and realize it's kim basically do that but it's just like well you know don't touch me there and don't touch me and all that kind of stuff you don't get it in other words you don't you don't really understand how he ended up the way he is why he's such a sociopath why he's so intrigued by bdsm you know what happened to, to him in his past why is he right, so messed up no you don't yeah get so, none he, of that. so defenders defenders of the, the franchise might tell you well you have to read the third book third book covers everything i was like all right no that but is not you how tell sequels story. work you're supposed to get yeah, that detail in the second book if not the first book or the first movie that is what sequels are about and in case you didn't realize folks yeah as a sequel this movie fails and this is the main reason why i hated this movie so much as a sequel it could have done so much more it could have gone deeper into not just the relationship between anastasia and christian but you know why he became who he was and why he's so deep into bondage and all that kind of stuff no they just hit that right. with with kim basica and that's it and then when you bring in the the, the, the psycho chick I thought you would have get like some kind of flashback as to how their relationship worked and why she gets so messed up. No, it's just she came in every once in a while. She do the Batman thing, of course. It was funny. They have a part where she, uh, where she shows up right behind on the stage and turns up with a gun, and then that situation get resolved real fast. And this, this right, this slight little spoiler. There's one scene where Kristen comes in and tells um, Anastasia to leave, and she's like, "No, I don't want to leave." It's like, I, I just paraphrase it. It's like, um. Why aren't you doing what I told you to do? Do what you're told. But like, that's what she was doing since the first movie. She has been doing everything that he has been saying. Everything to, to, to teach it. She might kind of flinch and stuff, but she just does everything. And once again here, we get that. But he, here's a moment that, that really, 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 really pissed me off to it. So... In the trailer, right? There's this there's this helicopter crash scene, right? I don't know if you saw yeah. it, but there's this helicopter. I, hilarious as hell, right? Very hilarious, right? I saw that. So that shows up probably around the the third act, right? Just out of the blue. And spoiler alert, you don't actually see the, the, the um the helicopter crash. So that crash that you saw in the trailer is not even there. You just cut to like a news report where Chris Gray was on this um meeting and he was flying back home and just suddenly the, the, the helicopter just, just um, gave way, fell and it blew up, right? So everybody in his apartment, as in the adoptive mother, the sister, Anastasia, her sister, and all the people involved, just there wondering where he is, right? And then he just opens the door and just walks into the apartment, right? Just so. He just right. walks in. Then you just assume it's like a day or so later. He just walks in, right? You have little bruises and stuff, and it's like, okay, okay, okay. So yeah of course anesthesia you know hugs him kisses him and stuff right and before that he proposes to her right but she never got around to answering the question right? okay but they kind of reveal after he, when he comes back and saying that yes she she accepts the the proposal right it's not official yet but she accepts the proposal now i understand that the, the movie trying to develop this whole love relationship between the two of them but like I say before, she does not want to be part of this BDSM stuff because she wants to have a normal relationship, right? Just based off of how she reacted in the last film, in the ending. So you know what she does right after the man come back and they talk and they express their love for each other? They go back to the playroom. For those who don't know, the playroom is the, the room that, this this special room that, um, that, that, um, that Christian has in this uh, in his mansion, basically, where all the straps and all the the bondage stuff is there. So this is the room where everything BDSM wise goes down. So she's like, "Take me to your room." And what does he do? He takes her to the room, ties her up, put the blindfold over her, and does the same exact. Well, it's something new. It's a different move actually. But the point is, is the same thing that she did not want to be a part of. He still does it. And yes, you can argue yes, there are a few moments before that, before that scene where you do see some BDSM stuff. Like there's one scene with like these silver balls where she have to like stick it up her, um, her vagina and stuff like that. I won't <laughs> say why, but it's that kind of sleaziness, right? But it's like right. all throughout 
the, the, the show you like, well, I don't want to be part of this thing. I want to have a normal relationship. So why, in God's name, you're going back to the same place and you're, you're, you're more or less encouraging the fella to do the same stuff that you were against in the first movie? It does not work. It yes. does not make sense. That is not character development. That is not a proper character act. She starts off the same way and ends the same way. She loves this guy and it ends with she loves this guy. There's no tension. There's no, you know, there's nothing really going on there. It's just they love each other. They love each other. They love each other. But oh, every once in a while we'll do something kinky and nasty and stuff. And then, like I said from the beginning, she did not want to be part of this whole BDSM stuff. But oh, is after he survive a helicopter crash. Yeah, let's just do it again. And there's what? You're mine. I'm yours. It's like a kick to the nuts straight for everybody who is expecting something different. Some, You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I was expecting yeah, we wonders out of this thing. Eh? But, oh gosh, man. Show some character growth. Trip. The last five minutes of the first yeah. movie is when is when is when um I see she get a backbone and say no I don't want none of this anymore goodbye and okay they start back right. over again and they have the chance you know to start to do you know to have a normal relationship fine yeah you do your little kinky stuff here and there you get some laughs from the audience okay fine and here's the thing here's what what could have made this film a lot smarter why not reverse the rules why not have where um, Anastasia is in control. She's no longer the submissive. You know, it's like, you know, like Christian Waltz is so bad, so do what I say. You know? Get down on your knees. Put on this dog chain. Do whatever you, you know, do what I say. It would have been something really clever. It would have been something interesting, you know? Reversing the rules. No, it's just the same thing. You're just watching these characters, these pretty people, just doing stuff. Oh yeah, so I forgot to mention too, because of that, the movie is just so boring, so dull. Because literally, yeah. nothing happens. Yeah, it's Whatever a bullshit, comes yeah. off as, as conflicts are resolved quickly. So with Mr. Hyde, that resolved quick. The one with the, with, the, with the psycho stalker thing, that resolved quickly. Everything else is just, look at me, I love Christian. Look at me, I love Anastasia nothing and there's all these racy sex scenes just there for the sake of being there there's nothing to it nothing like literally i could say beat for beat is similar to the first movie it's just that they try to make it a little bit more dramatic but the end result it just becomes way more unintentionally hilarious than the first one like i was watching it had some moments where i was just like busting out laughing because of how dumb it is and then the dialogue once again is contrived this is you know it's just poorly written and you could argue yes to rip it off from the book but it just don't work now I'll give credit once again um the acting is okay um the performers are fine you know they do what they had to do you know they make the most out of the crappy script that they're given um the cinematography once again is on point that's one thing it's it's a both movies are well shot well lit all that kind of stuff but dude at the end of the day dread still a piece of shit dread and you could get the best camera you could get yeah. the best lights i could do all that stuff and you film in a piece of shit but at the end of the day it's exactly that it's a well shot well lit piece of shit right so this but yeah i'll, I'll close here because i could go on and on with this eh? this movie just off of that title darker could have been darker dread it could have been more grim, more tense, more sus more suspense filled. It's not. It's just pretty much the same dramatic stuff. You might get little hints of tension, little hints of suspense, but there's nothing really. It's just all these bland kind of soap opera s moments. And then there's all just all these excuses just to lead up to a, a sex scene here, then a sex scene there, then a sex scene there. And once again they're bordering along the you know the you know leaving the R region and going into like real softcore porn kind of stuff. But dude, yeah, you could see better stuff like that, like on the net. Right? Like type in Pornhub and type you know BDSM, and you'll right. see better stuff like that. You won't get a crappy story <laughs> to fill up two hours. Yes, this movie runs. Right, like I about studied. Two hours I studied. In. No, I studied. I saw. I saw people tell you that you know porn probably have better stories than this nonsense. You know, just give us something simple. Um. 
I need some right. help with the plumbing. You know, set up a cable. Okay, cable right. fix. Pizza, okay, pizza I delivery. have no money. Right. All right, here's what I'm gonna do here. Okay, yeah. boom. That's all I need for story. Don't give me no contrived crap about this relationship that is not realistic and will not work in the first place. You know, like <sighs> you just it's it's just the same two characters that you don't care about and you just want to care about them a little bit more but once again you're just doing the same thing again and you know you could argue and say but this is how the book is this is how it is it's all leading up to the big reveal at the end crap it doesn't right. have to be that way and okay you could argue and say that yes everything that happens in the movie is exactly how it is in the book so, you know, it's easy to say that, yeah, it's obvious the book is crap. So why would I want to read this now? I sat through two of these movies already. Why should I read the third book? Why should I read the book spirit? And why, oh, why should I watch the last film? And yes, by the way, midway into the end credits, you do see a little teaser trailer for the, um, the last film, Fifty Shades Freed. And I'll tell yeah. you one time, there's nothing in it. If you are a Twilight fan, you pretty much know where they're leading up to. That's all I would say about that. I'm not even going to spoil what happens there. But if you're a Twilight fan, you kind of know where this show going to lead up to anyway. Because this yeah. beat for beat is just like Twilight. But unlike Twilight, which had this whole deeper story about the war between, you know, the, the, the werewolves and the vampires and this whole Illuminati stuff and this big thing. There's no big threat. There's no big conflict. It's just... Will he leave? Will she stay? Will she come? Will he go? You know, there's nothing really. It's just these characters in a relationship. Yeah, nothing going on. Nothing. Two hours of nothing. And I could just go on and right. on and on about this, but yo. I lose him of yeah, voice. But hands down. Yeah, we get glad it point. But hands down. This is one of the worst movies I saw for 2017. And this is one of the worst sequels I ever see in my entire life. This feel right. as a sequel. It feel as setting up this bigger world. It feel at exploring the, the main characters. It just feels in every regard. But I would say this though. It has its audience. And because of that, it will make money. It will make money in the box office. Unfortunately, oh, okay. a movie called The Lego Batman Movie, which I wish that we saw this weekend, unf you know, is making way more bank than this show here. Which is seen a lot. Well, I, I, I hear, I hear, I hear not. I hear not the, the routine for Lego Batman and maybe Jodrick to beat it. So we'll see at the end of the, the box office. You'll know, we'll know by now, actually. The box office should have come out by now. Which yeah. is at the time of this recorded. About, you know, afternoon, evening, Sunday. So we'll find yeah. out. And, and on the subject of John Wick Chapter 2, at least the title alone, Chapter 2, made a bigger promise than Darker in Fifty Shades. At least with the yeah. John Wick Chapter 2, it was exactly that. It was a bigger story. The stakes were higher. You know, you got that with that show. And that's why we both enjoy that movie, right? This one here, Fifty Shades Darker, nothing. It wasn't dark. It didn't go deeper into anything. It could have. Like, I could have got an idea of why Christian Grey was who he is. Or why a person like Anastasia would still stick around with this guy even though he forced her to do all these things. They could have done that. It could have been more provocative, more thought-provoking. But unfortunately, it's not. So like I said before, it has this audience. And you know, if you, if, you, if you like the books and you enjoy the first movie, if it didn't, if it wasn't like, you know, if it didn't cause bile to, 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 to rise up in your neck and you just enjoyed it for what it was, I mean, in the truth, and you enjoyed it for what it was, then you will enjoy this. I mean, it's that kind of sleazy, kind of, you know, kind of heavy R-rated soap opera kind of vibe. You watch it and you giggle with your friends like, hey, look, Tracy K, taking off his shirt. <laughs> oh, look, he put right. silver balls up a, up a cooch. <laughs> you know? You know, you're giggling at how, you know, sleazy it is. Like, you know, it's, it's like in school and you, you're looking at some kind of porn magazine and you're like, you're showing your friend and you're like giggling and laughing. But you don't want the teacher to find out. That's that's what these shows are. You know? Right. And you could argue and say, oh, these kind of shows are stimulating and they help with the relationships and all that. And, you know, they, 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 yeah. they spark a fire. Fuck that shit, Trev. Okay. That's what porn right, so was made for. All right? That's all I have to say about that. But, you know, written-wise... I will give this a 1 out of 5 dread. Of course, wow. it sucked. The only reason why I don't give it this a 0 is because 
Yes, because I yes, I hated the show a lot, but there was a kind of you know, a kind of I don't want to say so bad it's good, but you know, like 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 the room for example, where you watch a bad movie and you're laughing at how bad it is. That's the best way you could really enjoy the show. Dread. Like you have to go in drunk. And fortunately, yeah, I wasn't inebriated. I didn't drink any beers before I watched it. So I actually drank a coke. Unfortunately, yeah. I stood up. I like I, my eyes were wide awake throughout the entirety of the show. I wasn't like sleeping on myself or nothing. I was awake through every like eye gouging moment. Sorry, I go to a minute of this show. I was awake, eh? wide awake. But, yo, if I had, like, three beers inside of me, though, I would have been laughing my ass off throughout this, throughout this entire movie. But, yeah, one out of five, definitely one of the worst movies I see this year. Right now, this is, this take the top spot in terms of worst movies of 2017. I wouldn't be surprised if by the end of the year, it stays there. So, you know, just like how the first movie made it to my number one list. Because, I mean, I could say what I want about Fantastic... Sorry, fan Stick being bad. At least when you understand the story behind it and why it turned out to be bad. I'm talking about production-wise now. You feel sorry for what happened. You can't help but feel sorry about it, even though the final product is garbage. When you really understand what happened behind the scenes, it really makes it kind of sad now when you think about it. But this one here... Twilight fan fiction that this so happened to be popular and then you make this movie and then you, you slap on all this gloss and you know glitz and glamour in it and it's all about oh well, this is you know such a kinky movie and you know it doesn't really delve deep into the subject matter it doesn't really make the whole BDSM thing or even sex in general that provocative or thought provoking it's just all these scenes there for the sake of being there and I'm supposed to be titillated by it but no it's really for like these like middle-aged women or, or you know women who just don't like to see the man watching porn but oh they, they, they want to go and see Fifty Shades Darker and they want to drag right. the man to go and see it especially with you know <laughs> the, with Valentine's Day coming up here and then you, you, you want the man to do the same kind of stuff that Christian doing but the catch is the man not rich or unless he is rich he's not gonna go out of his way to do the stuff that Christian Grey is doing because 9 times out of 10 he yeah. won't even care for Christian Grey because yeah, be he is idea. not a man's man Nobody wants to be but Christian Grey. Just, I don't know. I just can't help but see it as kind of weird. I just can't help but see the whole thing, the whole enterprise is very strange and, and kind of insulting to almost everybody involved, not just women or even men or anything like that. Just like, yeah, this is just insulting everyone's intelligence. Who is this for exactly? Exactly. Whatever. Like, we live in a world yeah, yeah. where we have women's rights and you have shows that really touch on sex and sexuality in different ways. In like Masters, Masters right. of Sex, for example, or is it a new black to right. extent. So why, why we have stuff like this that do we even Just, yeah, light a, do we even look. hold a candle to you know classic erotic um, films right. like say Belle de Jour in the realm of the senses or even like but basic I, I instinct help, you know stuff like that you know yeah but I can't help but think you know it just remind me of you know the old kind of Euro, it's like the American equivalent of the old Euro trash Emmanuel movies I was thinking that too yeah like, right it <laughs> Emmanuel, totally right, yeah, those, yeah. Like those terrible terrible movies but they are they kind of sexy, maybe. But it is so weird and strange. It's like, yeah, this is just total nonsense. Yeah, they, they kind of, and yeah, we are right, though. And these shows are kind of sexy. You know, they do hint at the sexiness kind of. now. Yeah. Kind of. But the problem yeah. is, because you don't buy into anything that you're watching here, it just feels like just this, like Hollywood just trying to do their own version of softcore porn. That's all it is. Right. So, not much more I could say about this. So, folks, like I say, if you enjoy the first movie and you don't care what the critics say, then by all means, go and check it out. You'll enjoy it. But for everybody else, skip this out. You know, Valentine's Day is coming up. You know, go and see a better movie. Go watch John Wick Chapter 2. Hell, watch Deadpool again, you know? You know, yeah, stream it or, 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 or buy the Blu-ray. Because that, to me, is like the perfect modern Valentine's Day movie. Like, for yeah. this decade, that is probably the best Valentine's Day the, like what I mean like a movie to watch on Valentine's Day that is the perfect movie you can't go wrong with that but not Fifty Shades darker not Fifty Shades gray, of, of grey sorry and sure as hell not Fifty Shades of black so yeah fuck this movie forget worst movie of the year right now skip this shit so yeah, yeah. that's pretty yeah. much my rant for this show like I was expecting to be a little bit more loud with this one but I had to kind of tone myself down because it's like again off the anger 
See, the thing is, like, if I went to see the show alone and I didn't watch John Wick Chapter 2, I would have just been furious behind this microphone yeah. here. But I'm glad that it, I'm glad that I watched John Wick, Jack. And John Wick was, like, the perfect um, palate cleanser for me. Like, I literally right. just watched the show immediately afterwards. I was just like, yeah, this is what a sequel's supposed to be like. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, folks, See. forget Fifty Shades Darker. Watch John Wick Chapter 2. If you're looking for something to watch, you know, in theaters, um, and, you know, if... You know, if Lego Batman movie is showing on, on, you know, where you're at, you know, by all means, check that out too. But, you know, hopefully when it comes down here, we will give that a look and we will review it as well. Right. So, uh, while, while I catch my breath here, Ricardo, where can we find you online, man? You can find me, um, Passat, R-M-E-D-D-Y, on Twitter. And then you can just type in my name, Ricardo Medina, on Facebook. And you should be, should locate me there. Cool. Well, you can also find me on Twitter. Just look for Legally Black MJB. MJB are in capital letters. You can also find me on Facebook. Um, look for Matthew Bailey. And also, you can look for a Legally Black official fan base where you find a link to this podcast here as well as the ones that we've done before as well as my re- reviews alongside that. So, yeah. Um, so, with upcoming stuff, well, we still have the the uh, Oscar predictions list. I can't wait to do that. Unfortunately... Right. You know, because of time and stuff, I would be able to watch all the all the nominees. And honestly, I really don't need to. Yeah. It's just really major ones I really keep my eyes on. And I kind of have in mind who I want to win. But of course, you have your predictions. You have, uh, you know, for example, like, you know, for sure, La La Land has a huge chance of winning. But, you know, I still rooted for... Um, I'm still pretty much rooted for Hello High Water. And um, yeah. Moonlight for you know either one either either show if they win I'll be so happy you know so you can look forward to that um, also with shows coming up I will make the effort to check out the Great Wall I mean it's from one yeah, of the I'll, I'll, I'll probably make, yeah I'll yeah so to. I will look past the whole whitewash stuff in it and just see the movie for what it is I mean I love the I love Zagi Bu's uh, movies as well so I can't wait to see what he does a cure for well this looks pretty decent you know i just yeah, love the that. visuals yeah, of that I yeah i really want to see that but i see so far it's been gay that uh well at least on rotten tomatoes i'm not sure the uh how much it's it's getting right the now not too hot. metacritic yeah the rate is not that hot but i don't know okay. I, I i'm not too sure if i'll see it i mean like i said the visuals i love them and i saw the trailer on big screen wow yeah beautiful but i don't know i, I think i'll be end up seeing the great wall over a cure for wellness but you know, I'll just have to figure it out during the week. Um, what else? What else? I know there's a, a couple more films on the, on the tip of my tongue. Oh, yes. I, I forgot to well, mention. I can't think of anything right now. Um, I forgot to mention. It, um, a dog's purpose is even 15. Yeah, but I hear a lot of bad things about it. I don't even think I could enjoy it as a so bad it's good kind of movie anyway. I don't know. Nothing well, about I don't... that should really interest me except the controversy, of course, but you know. Right. Yeah. Um, I forgot to mention too, Iron Fist. Yes, we forgot to mention that a yeah. trailer for Iron Fist came out. It looks came out, yeah. better look okay. than I expected it to be. It's it's actually coming out. Um, I think it's in the middle of March, if I'm not mistaken. All episodes coming out, you know, to on, on Netflix to watch. So right. I will, you know, usually they come out on you know on Fridays. So I will just take the whole Saturday off, watch all thirteen, I assume, episodes, and you know you can expect yeah. a review from us with that. Um. Yeah. Also, the subject of Netflix, I see, you know, Bill and I actually having this talk show. I see, like, you know, I think it's supposed to come out next month as well, if I'm not mistaken. Some talk show, I forgot the name of it. And we also got, like, a... Oh, yes, we also saw the first teaser trailer for Dear White People. Right. Yeah, which, which still which I haven't seen the movie about, of, but, about, it, yeah. It, yeah, because if you, if you look at the ratings for it, it has, like, really horrible negative ratings. A lot of people downvoted it. Wait, 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 um, the series or the, or the movie? No, the series, the new series, the trailer really? for the Netflix series, and people was like real hating on it and what? look it up with real bad and everybody saying, and I'll talk about it too. We can talk mention that. I thought people would have been like, well, "Wow, this this indie sleeper hit finally has its own yeah, series no, on suspect. Netflix." Like, come on, be hype, yeah, man. I, I suspect. Yeah, no, let's look up the trailer on, on YouTube and see how bad the, the scores are. But just it, what I suspect is that most of these people didn't see the original movie because. When they, they, what they're claiming is that well, the show is racist against white people and it's like yeah they like, didn't see the damn movie though you know can they look at the shots because I saw the trailer look at the shots with the, with, the, with, the, um, with the white people in blackface like oh no no <laughs> we can't do that that, that, was, no. that was in the original movie but if you look at the the 
the, the thing people keep thinking that the movie per, you know portrayed a particular narrative now that's like totally what didn't happen right they right, like right. totally misrepresent it's almost like a willful misrepresentation of the movie now yeah yeah uh, or they just did outright they just outright ignorant of the original film the, the original film is much more nuanced on the subject of race than most people think that you would think how the film is when you're going into it now right right so i think well the film just gonna have a particular narrative and that's not the case whatever right yeah, but I, I mean, yeah. I for one, like I say, I haven't seen the original one, but I heard a lot of great things about it. So I will make sure to check right. that out before I watch the series. So that's something else to look forward to. That's pretty right. much about it, guys. So once again, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, whatever you listen to this. This was Machi Bailey and Ricardo Medina. And we are signing off from another episode of Bears Beats and Bailey. So take care, guys. Until the next one. And happy Valentine's Day. Later. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, whenever you listen to this. This is Machi Bili alongside my critique and fan in crime, Ricardo Medina. Hola, hola, hola. Hola, hola. Kids, ask your parents. <laughs> and, uh, this is another episode of Bears, Beats, and Bailey. So this is going to be a jam-packed episode, folks. Yeah, you know, if you listen to the long, yeah. extended cut of this episode, yeah, yeah we have a lot of stuff. Uh, what was it? We have a lot of stuff to talk about. Um, yeah. First off, you know, the Super Bowl at the time of this recording is going to be held later on this afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we're expecting trailers, some yeah. trailers and teasers. Yeah. Well, teasers, right? Are we getting no, teasers? Trailers. trailers. Like, you know, everybody is getting a Super Bowl trailer, which is to be this fancy-ass version of trailers. Kind of, it's be usually unique. Of yeah. Some footage. It's actually been cut very, very well. Yeah. Um. Well. Well. The two that 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 we <laughs> that we saw, well, at least the two that I know of, were the ones for Ghost in Shell, which I really did like. Yeah. And Transformers: The Last Night, which I admittedly liked. Okay. And not I... too hyped for the show, but I liked how the trailer was put together. I liked that little shot with the couple of scenes with with um Optimus, you know, trying right. to beat the shit out of Bumblebee. Bumblebee. That, was, that was cool. That was badass. Whatever. Yeah. Um. Yeah. We expect all the comic book movies and stuff, as I said. Anyway, well, so we're gonna do. Yeah, um, of course, well, oh yes, and well, <laughs> as, as per request by, by Ricardo, we have to talk about the um, recent episode of Legends of Tomorrow. Yeah, that's bad. Um, yeah, yeah, which <laughs> this wow. kind of stepped the whole the yeah. whole show up, like, yeah. considerably, like, yeah. wow. You know, um, apart from all that, we, uh, well, on the subject of TV, I'm finally going to be talking about season four of everyone's favorite modern detective series, um, straight out of, 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 of BBC. Yeah. Sherlock, season right. four. And I just want to just mention, I don't doubt I'll be doing a full review, but I just want to mention that The Expanse is back. Yes, uh, yes. Well, we can talk about that before the, yeah. um, the, before first, the that's Sherlock the, review. That's the first two episodes shown. Uh, when the end of the season happens, I will talk about that. Right. Yeah. Um, and then we're going to continue the whole well, road to the Academy Awards. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk about... Well, actually, these are going to be the last two movies we're going to talk about with regards to the Best Picture nomination. Yeah. Um, Manchester by the Sea. 
and Lion. Yeah. And then we're going to get to some creepy, horrific shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. <laughs> two decent, two decent. Well, one is a trailer, the other is yeah. trailer-ish, but I dare not say why. Yeah. yeah. Um, what, the first one came out last year, like late last year. It, it was like... A lot of it was under a lot of people's radar. Yeah. Fortunately, I saw the trailer for it. I was creeped out by it, but I just never got around to watching it. Mm-hmm. It's called the Auto- the Autopsy of Jane Doe. Yeah, which I saw. Yes, yeah. and then the movie that um, was supposed to come out last month down here, but we finally got to see it here. Yeah. I'm talking about M Night Shyamalan's mm-hmm. return, yes. quote unquote, yeah. to form with Split. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, I, I do think it's a, uh, it's a, it is a return to form somewhat. I don't dismiss him at all. It's not. It's not as mediocre as his last film. That yeah. Was the one with the, what the visit? The visit? I, I haven't seen the visit, but, but it, it got some. No, I saw it. Um, so sorry, Some people liked it. A lot of people on on his train, who was always a fan and kind of never got off that train for whatever reason, um, they hiked it. Mm. This is big, but I was totally underwhelmed by it. I was like, no, he's still in the doghouse. Sorry, but split pulls him out of the doghouse in my opinion. All right. Yeah. Okay. So first, you'll talk about you know well. Well, well, I think we pretty much yeah. mentioned the Super Bowl stuff yes, here. Yeah, so let's just talk about Super Bowl. Um, yes, yeah, Superb Owl. Yeah, yeah, so uh, just a lot of trailers. I expect, the, I expect all the big stuff. You know, your Guardians of the Galaxies, your Spider-Mans, your Justice League. I do expect a Justice League trailer because we have not seen anything substantial from this, from Justice League at all. Let's yeah, there was, that, there was that long-ass trailer that was yeah, going that nowhere. Bullshit. That yeah. bullshit, that was just aimless. That is not a trailer. Um, I expect some structure. I expect to see, you know, the actual Justice League. Um, battling together, and then I expect a little teaser of Superman coming back to life because that's what they need to fucking do. Of course, right? especially to be that bullshit stunt. Look before. up in the sky, some, something, something like that. Some shit. And they need to just, uh, you know, just that they, they just cover up that stunt that they pulled in Batman v Superman that completely collapsed and failed. Yes, by killing Superman in that dumb way. Wow. Um, whatever. Yeah. Point is, bring back Superman, make us forget as much as they can for Batman v Superman. And just get you know, just get his train moving and moving on. Yeah. As I say, I don't know. I, I in my head, um, Wonder Woman is the last chance. If Wonder Woman is a mess, like bad, bad, they done. Yeah, I don't think people will care they about Justice League even if yeah. it if it turns out to be good. I don't know no, because no, because if, the funny thing is like if, before that we haven't Thor Ragnarok and that no, might no, really if, you know. If, if no, but no, look, Marvel done running circles around them. Whoever cares, you care about that. The point is to get the momentum going. If Wonder Woman is bad, like really bad. Like we're talking about, it, ha- it has a simple gold standard for Wonder Woman. It has to be at least better than Man of Steel. Yeah. Which is, well, again, you, can, you, can, you cannot find only quantification of things, but my thing is just, get yeah, 60 on Rotten Tomatoes, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I agree with that. And Six, 60 and up is, is right. fine. And that's about the same as Captain America or the first Captain America. That's right. what it needs to be. Just be as good as that, be as good as the first Captain America, which I liked. Mm-hmm. And just do that film, tell us your... Tell a simple story. You don't jump about the place like some idiot, manic spider, crazy person. Yeah, and, like and, and easy on the Easter eggs. Well, sorry, the Justice League Easter, uh, oh, Easter eggs, please. Problem, Take it like, easy. Yeah, you see, you know, the problem is subtlety now. Is it, again, Zack Snyder and, and company do seem to have the understanding of something called subtlety. Yeah. So, you know, just tell your story. Tell your story. Maybe hint at something, hint at this character, that character, a little something, and you're good. That is it. Well, cool. that's it. Um, the Justice League I expect to be a complete mess but whatever do it we'll see we'll, we'll see, see we'll see trailer might win me over yeah well um, that's it I think it's just again Spider-Man Guardians Thor you might say Thor because we haven't seen any Thor, Thor stuff at all actually no no so I, I, I kind of doubt it but I, who knows I might be surprised right. yeah. I'm hoping to see some Thor stuff here to see because basically they're hinting at a lot of Planet Hulk-ish stuff in this yeah so I hype for it cool. right uh, what else comics DC TV Yes, yes. Um, the recent episode of right. so uh, Legends of Tomorrow. Yeah, this yeah. Week in the Arrowverse has been really damn awesome. Now, the Arrowverse is basically just four shows Supergirl, uh, Flash, Flash, Legends of Tomorrow, and Arrow. Yeah. I don't give a shit about Arrow. I don't watch Arrow. <laughs> Uh, okay, okay, okay. As, as someone who who catched up on Arrow, Arrow is going pretty good so far. Okay. Um, I, did, I well, all right. I did not like the fact that you know the the tease that's at the mid season finale that Laurel Lance was supposedly alive now, right. and then all of a sudden we realized, spoiler alert, that she's actually the the Laurel from Earth Two, the one black with siren. the black yeah black siren black with the black siren powers. Like, oh shit, they really did that, really. Right. But it's still there, it's still functional, and also too, they, they, they found a, a successor, if you will, for Black Canary. So that's interesting. Oh, yeah. Right. Um, well, Supergirl has been intermittent. Um, I'll say I actually enjoy Supergirl a lot. Me too. Same here. But here's the problem: it just have these really stupid, 
dumb moments. It just have these incredibly dumb plot induced stupidity moments. It's like wow. Guardian, anyone? Right. That was, <laughs> listen, they had to wrap that shit up. That just pisses me off right now because Jimmy any bullshit. Tired of Jimmy. Wrap up Jimmy arc, please. Yeah, I, I wonder like is in the, the the previous episode where um where Supergirl finally realizes who Guardian yeah. really is, and he asks him like, why why are you doing all this for? It's yeah. like, well, why why you why you gain why why you could get to be here? Why can't yeah. I be a superhero? Yeah, because I don't pause, motherfucker. Yeah, That's yeah. why you're putting yourself at but, risk. Yes, but, but, but 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 here's here's, yeah. the, here's the argument though. It's like she's saying she kind of giving you the impression that well you know what why don't you just work with me. So yeah. I could protect you. It's like, but no, why wanted, can't I do this by myself? You to be, yeah. I mean, give me a fucking break. Yeah? This, this it's not like Leonardo to ride a fucking bike, yeah, man. No, I mean, just, come to yeah, Exactly. It's not something that you had to train for. And here's what the dumb part about it. Now, again, if it was Alex making this argument, I could kind of understand. Kind of. Maybe. Because Alex is trained. She did this job. She, she, she's a DO agent. She's doing this shit for years. Right. But she had no need to do this secret identity thing anyway. Right. But no, no, no. I what understand what you mean. What you're trying to say? In terms of the superpower... Hero shit. Now. Yeah, yeah. But here's the problem: the whole win helping out Jimmy and having him be a hero that is totally counter, that's completely counterproductive, right? Give Alex a damn suit. You build a suit for Jimmy, you should build a suit for Alex. Yeah. And other soldiers who well trained. Fuck Jimmy. Jimmy yeah. J- Jimmy's it. supposed to be focusing on his shit yeah, over cat culture. Thank you. What are you doing in the yeah, night? Yeah, you. <laughs> We're all playing. You fighting bad guys. Come on, man. Perfect in his role as he had a cat co right now. That that make good. I mean, you can argue how much sense that make in terms of corporate ladder. Shit yeah, 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 but, but who cares? Yeah. Whatever. My point is that make better sense than this guardian bullshit. Cut that nonsense. It's fucking garbage. Whatever. Moving on. Yeah. Um, so let's just tomorrow that episode. Flash. Which was which is aptly titled The Legion of Doom. Yeah, right. right. So they, they did right. So I want to talk about Flash because Flash did in the end of Flash season two, they basically showed the Black Flash. That is what Zoom turned into when you time reached Yes, them, yes, yes. I they, remember. They did the same color scheme and they did rip the pattern face off. I was like, oh shit, they're doing Black Flash later. Thinking we are gonna get Black Flash either in season three or season four. Nope. What they did with it, they decided to put Black Flash straight up in the Legends of Tomorrow because we saw Yellow Flash, that's the reverse flash. Yeah, you're about to turn. Having shenanigans, and then yeah, and, so and really, really, really justifying why he's there in the first right. place. Right. So again, it's normal to travel shenanigans. Don't make perfect sense, but they at least justify why this character is still a still alive, still around, because he's supposed to not exist and following from the events of, of um, Flash with the Flashpoint. Yeah. And I was like, well, what? This is real hard. And it, it literally in five minutes they explain that shit. They explain it. Understand why it is what's going on we are, through the, 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 the rules of time in Legends of Morrow, which is like all over the fucking place. They of course, really yeah, don't matter. They don't care. And then, not only that, they had this awesome sequence of Black Flash versus uh, Eobar Tone, realizing yes, that yes, he, yes. Needs, he needs Damien Dark and Merlin more than they need him. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> That's one. So they give the villain some character character moments. And then on top of that, they decided to do a nice switcheroo with the, who's the fourth member of, of the, the Legion of Doom. And I was like, I was um, like, well, really? Good. Yeah, boy. Uh, they, they did this. Yeah, they did this. <laughs> and I was like, nice. Pick it up. Uh, right now, right now, I, I'm on the internet just doing the ratchet clap. I didn't do the ratchet <laughs> clap to people on the internet who knocking Legends. I was like, Legends of Tomorrow is the best show in our base. I just yelling that at people constantly online. Because, yeah, it really picked up with our last episode. That yeah. was fucking awesome, Dre. You see, this is the thing that I really like about this show. Like, at first I was put off by it, but now I really respect it with season two. Is that it? Kind of embraces this whole wildness, and like yeah. it could be, it could do go it any place. No, it could it, do whatever yeah, it wants yeah, sooner. Exactly, they understand. It could be uneven at times, but when no, it but, when okay. it focus, so they the focus. I said the big mistake of season one was I was enjoying that you had Vandal Savage. I was happy about that, but the problem was that they decided to bring the Hawks, and I was like, why connect the Hawks to Vandal Savage? That's dumb. But they were doing that with with Arrow and and Flash prior to kind Legends of Tomorrow, right? No, but that was just a bullshit setup for Legends of Tomorrow. Right. So that's why I didn't give a shit. Have Vandal Savage. Have Vandal Savage do his thing, and then they just fight with Vandal Savage. But this arc with the Hawks is such nonsense. I was like, either do one or two things. And what they decided to do is merge Vandal Savage with the with the villain. I forget the villain's name from from the Hawks. The Hawks history. The whole ancient Egyptian. The oh yeah, um, God, <laughs> I, I, I can't remember his name. What but they should have done is just have that villain. And then you have them in relation to the Hawks. So you do that. Right. Or you do Vandal Savage. But don't waste Vandal Savage on the Hawks. That, right. that was stupid. Yeah. My thing is that they should have the villain, have him reincarnate. And what they gotta have is a, well, if he killed the Hawks, um, he could he would come back with with a memory or something like that. Mm. So instead of having Vandal Savage just live all the time, which is bullshit. Forget it. Just have him keep his memories with each reincarnation, have the Hawks lose their memory. Or you could have this battle where they battle over memory. So if you kill him in that time, they keep their memories. 
whilst if he killed them, he, he keep them. So make it clever, no? yeah. or something like that. But he's like, hey, let's have fun. So everyone's like, yeah, it was just aimless nonsense. And then the two hawks are incredibly uncharismatic. Boy. I hated the two of them. And then I, said, I, I like how they write them off now. So yeah, he's totally like, yeah, bye bye, bye bye. No, they, they hint that they're going to come back, eh? Because they just show, oh, well, Tan died, Vader in the future. Right. That bullshit. So they're coming back, most likely. I hope they don't. I don't <laughs> care. Um, write them out. The two of them were bad actors. I hate it. Carter Hall and Rishi Nim Tashi. Uh, Shia Hall, whatever you name. Shia Hall. Yeah. Hated the two of them. They didn't work. Get rid of them. Good. Decided to bring in Vixen. Awesome. Citizen Steel. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Good characters, and then they decided to ramp up season two, and yeah, they did all the right things, all the right things of what you're supposed to do with it. Yeah, and they just embrace the time material and just embrace the silliness of it. And again, humanistic storytelling with your fireworks at the end. Of course, yeah. You're yeah, trying yeah, to yeah. do this realistic world building horseshit. Forget that. It is almost never work unless you know what you're doing and you plan that ahead. That's exactly. Where, that's where the DCAU work and the DCU is dog shit. And I like the self awareness of the, the show itself. It's always like like when they explain to like how you were talking about just now they about what if this time thing. You know, there will always be a character be like, that Yeah, but that makes no sense. sense. Right. Okay. <laughs> I, I love like, that. I love, I like love those exactly. moments. Yeah, you, yeah. you don't waste your time with it. No. Anyway, that's it. Flash going decent, they're doing its own thing. Uh, it's nothing to talk about or write home about, but I hope it picks up with the whole arc with Wally and and yeah, what they're doing with Iris and you know if Iris might die or who. And I suspect yeah. they're gonna kill another character, which most likely they'll either I I put in my money on killing HR, the new Wells from Earth 19. Yeah, yeah. Because they did a kick ass episode, but it was kinda dumb. <laughs> but they did an episode in, introducing um what's her name boy? Gypsy. Yes. Which has roughly the same powers. Well, she don't have the same, same powers. She have a, a whole other bag of powers in the comics. But they have a, more or less have the exact same powers such as um, Cisco. Yeah. And they did a, a Clash episode and they did a nice little episode where all of them went in all the different dudes. Oh, that was cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, in, including in, into Supergirl's reality. Right. That was, that was, that was a, a nice little fun episode. Yeah. Um, and then they did a thing with Wally. Basically, hinting that Wally going to be the one to save Iris. Which I like. Um, yeah, but one thing though. <laughs> it, it just kind of came... Like, I... Get what they're trying to set up, right. but it's kind of like, um, like I take it from Wally's perspective. Um, why out of the blue you'll say I am the one? No, but it. it makes sense because Wally increasing in speed and they found that Wally was faster, would potentially be faster than Barry because Barry not getting faster. Right. Wally getting faster. In fact, Wally much faster than what Barry was when um, he was at that time. Yeah. As a speedster. So you know, like a Wally practices every day. But, yeah, <laughs> right, but the thing is, Wally, well, Wally, Wally's power set is slightly different anyway. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. How he get his power so, his acceleration rate is much better than Barry's. And the idea is to train Wally to get fast enough to deal with the situation instead of Barry. Barry, from what I understand, Barry, no way Barry going to get as fast to deal with the problem. Mm. And Makes get, sense, yeah. Right. Like, like that, it's fine. Um, personally, the only thing I want to remember about this whole thing with Wally, I just hated Wally having the yellow suit. It's, I don't know. There's something about like seeing his suit. It looks... He has a problem. Kind of... Well, it's kind of baggy. That's yeah, kind of baggy. Yeah, it, kinda... what, what happens is that in season one... Um, Barry was very uncomfortable in his suit and on set, um, Grand Gustin. Yeah. And they had to change his suit. So Grand Gustin's suit is baggy, but they decided to line it and, and structure it in a different way. But they decided, decided to make the aesthetic design choices that end up looking kind of weird for Wally. But at the, the, the end of the day, the actor has to feel comfortable in his suit. Right. But was Barry, I'm sorry, I keep saying Barry, but Grand Gustin was overheated in season one pretty much. It was a total mess. So him. I can imagine, I forget the, 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 the kid's name who's playing, who's playing Wally. Well, yeah. Of course, we'll be sweating in this thing. Yeah, it's a mess. Yeah. So, you have multiple suits for the sake of the shot. Um, but anyway, what I, that's not the complaint. The complaint is the look of the suit. We know Wally West has a yellow suit. That is one of the versions of Wally West, but we know the silver and red is the other suit he has. I totally prefer the silver, silver and red look. Uh, and here's my problem. It's that thematically it looks weird because it's like, yeah, yellow flash is already yellow flash. So, give him a different suit. Right, in, but, but remember the colors now that he used in no, Flash, a lot no, of reds and yellows, right? right so, no, you know, if you want to take like that. In Flashpoint, it made sense having him having the yellow suit. I like that. But he should get the silver suit in this universe now. Mm. I just don't feel in the yellow suit. Well. Yeah, they might change it. They might come up with some bullshit want, reason yeah, to... I want to, I want to yeah. get the silver and, silver and red eventually. Okay. Or, or even the red and silver where in the current comic, comic um, I think it's um, the New 52, not New 52, the current... Um, reboot. Right. In the current reboot storyline, you have a real kick ass red and red and silver outfit. Love it. Um, I hope you get something like that. Well, cool. Yeah. That's the, that's the end of that. That is awesome. All that's right. Um, Expanse, which I know you covered last year, right. um, season one. I haven't got, I haven't catched up on it yet, but this, apparently season two has started. I yeah. have to go as far as saying this is the Firefly or the Battlestar Galactica of this generation of science fiction. It what? Is that good. 
it, but it's just so well done in terms of being grounded in science fiction. Um, is it heavy on the the science in it, yeah, or is it like really no, hard to, no, to no, no. understand? It doesn't, it doesn't do any exposition when it comes to engineering. Character like how a real engineer would be explaining like how Jodie LaForge so the the the, the incredible character like that needs to reroute the power of that bullshit. You yeah. explain and, and and yell to your autistic audience. You have an audience who understand there's a real world with with people with skills and training, and they just do stuff. This is how to do something. They yell it out. Do this because that will work in this way. Because right. they know what they're talking about. And have a bunch of characters who like that. All the smart characters. There's a bunch of competent characters. Military, engineering, and then the politics. It's such good politics. And as I say, how I explained it last time with with uh, the worlds is Earth, the Moon, Mars, and then the Belt, right? right? Which is the poorest of the poor. And then they basically reveal what the main plot is, which is they basically verify it have an alien presence in the soil, like extra solar, right? Somebody from outside the solar system basically sent a sent a basically a warning shot, and that's all I need to see because that first two episodes was just some harrowing shit. I oh jeez, really okay. Damn, yeah. like this show, Jack. It's just so well done. I don't read the books. It have books. Oh, there's books for it. There's books. But oh, the books came up before. Yeah, okay. yeah, those books came up. I it have people lose buy all the books again. I, I don't want to make it a Game of Thrones situation. Where, oh, <laughs> right, yeah. I read the book. Oh, duh, 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 duh. I want to hear that shit. I, 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 I actively avoid any subreddit because of that because just a sort of book people day. Um, I'm not in the mood for that. Look, if you have book, no, that wasn't how it was in the book. That whole shit, right? I already see that pathological fandom split up the Game of Thrones people, and I just don't want to get it done. I'm not yeah. a fan of Game of Thrones. I am a book person in Game of Thrones, right? Long read it, long time. I was like, oh, they reach here already, and I'm like, all right, I'm okay. a douchebag. So I, 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 I am the reverse actually. I love the the show. Never got around to the books. Right. So for me, it's, I like the show, and I don't want to get into the expanse books. Cool. Show that first two episodes are just so well done, and it had this little moment where, um, okay, so it was firing on the ship, and you see me like these bullets going straight through the ship. Now, okay, you have no shields, shields down, not that bullshit. Yeah, yeah it's not that. that it's not. It's not. It's not JJ Abrams Star, Star Trek. Trek. No, right. no, it's not that bullshit. But even all Star Trek used to do that bullshit. Boys, you are seeing bullets going through people, shots going through whole systems, screen and thing. And then when they, you see me, the, the debris floating, and when they make a hard turn, you see the debris move. Like, oh, yeah, okay, on point, okay. They, ha- they have all the physics right. I mean, they really do a good job. Go to the- I'm sure they make a couple mistakes here or there, but I they really just it's just the effort that's all we want. The conscientiousness, make the effort. If you slip up, that's fine. You're not a scientist, you never was all day out in space to see it play out in real time, but you understand how physics should work, yeah, how it should work on a space shuttle. You know, you know, that reminds me of in a bit. Um, Okay, so watched it recently. I mean, it's one of my all-time favorite sci-fi movies, 2001 A Space Odyssey. Yeah. Yes, it came out in 1968, and a lot of people like to make the criticism like, well, you know, Earth doesn't look like that. But remember the time they didn't know how Earth really looked like, so they just kind of figured it out yeah. in their head. Yeah. But the physics behind it, when it yeah. comes to like, that's how the, the ships moved and the construction that's everything. Right. Like, Kubrick consulted a lot of like, NASA. you know, like NASA and them. Yeah. They were on board. Like, there's this great documentary on the Blu-ray explaining like how they did that. Like, the man did his his whole yeah, work you trend. Know, you know, right. I so, love when when movies and TV shows, especially yeah. involving like you know sci-fi or space stuff, yeah. do that kind of thing. They yeah. they put in a lot of I, effort I, and research. And, yeah, um, the movie Interstellar did that as well. Well, one half of the movie. Um, one half. Okay. Yeah, well, I mean, I'll, I'll get to well, the, 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 the Tesseract part didn't work. Even though a lot of people say it mathematically made sense, but uh, uh, I don't know. It didn't work from a yeah. storytelling standpoint. Okay. Um, but the point is, um, yeah, I, for me, I just want good conscientious sci-fi in this sense. It, the expanse is so well done. It's so grounded. Um, the politics makes sense. Everything works. Like shenanigans on Earth. Earth full of shit. Mars up to shit when it comes to their, their politics. You understand why Mars is behaving the way they do? Because they introduce, they kind of show the planets on Mars for the first time, so you get to see Marines on Mars operate and right. this fight and thing. It's like, all right, cool. They introduce a couple new characters, love it. Tom Jane's character, awesome as a, as usual. All the usual cast, mm-hmm. awesome, great. I just love in this. Um, I so ex- I just really enjoyed this first first two episodes. Um, I hope they, well, there are a couple little, little plot issues I had, but I hope they had to justify it now. Yeah, yeah. right. So cool. I on board hyped. I will give a full review when that, that season done. Cool, and I will make the effort to try and catch up on on that show so we and can. I strong, I strongly recommend yeah. it. It, it yeah, anything. If you are a stickler for grounded sci-fi like me, I like my grounded hard sci-fi. This is the only game in town on television for me right now. I don't know if any other shows 